I think Ollie's looking for something in his cup, in his drinking horn. Uh, yeah, it is. He's looking for what dignity he's got left before he came on here. Just checking for poison. <laughs> training with bears and mountains little fun fact for you as always i am joined by rusty mania raptor slevin and also what happens when you mix internet with a fictional character i have underscore jesus also known as maxin and this week we are also joined by a friend of mine and our first special guest for this podcast oliver hollingdale say hi ollie hello so let's get right on into it hang on ollie. hang on hang on whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. When was the first time you've ever been outside, like in a mountain <laughs> range, and fighting bears and lions? I think this is all on the uh, oh, all, all video games and stuff. Oh, uh, Skyrim. Skyrim. Okay, <laughs> you played some Skyrim. Good for you. <laughs> you played Skyrim. And Skyrim. Prove it, you know. And these tremendous. I'll show you another time. <laughs> tremendous guns here. You know my pythons. They don't have guns in Skyrim. What are you talking about? <laughs> Got a bow and arrow, it's fine, you know, <laughs> you can use that. Anyway, what was our first subject for before I like I, I, you? just completely yeah, derailed. Yeah, I know, sorry. Go on. <laughs> Fuck it. What do we have to go to a what are you talking about? So, we've got our guest this week, Oliver, you know, um, a young up and coming director on YouTube. You know, tell us a bit about yourself, you know, on, on what it is, you know, you do. I make movies. <laughs> 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 well, there you I go, guys. Guess. I'm a fan of many comic films, like everyone is, and I'm just fortunate enough that I studied in a subject that allowed me to, you know, project these ideas into a form of film stuff, whether it's, you know, Dread or Star Wars or anything else, really. It's just, um, you know, it's just. It's just an extension of the imagination. I just love it. I to love it. It's loads of fun. Excellent. Awesome. So how did you get into, like, doing your Dread films? Uh, well, it was seeing the 2012 Dread. Um, I remember seeing the trailer for it, and I thought, oh, my God, this is actually pretty cool. Because, again, I remember the Stallone version. Seeing that even when I was a kid, and I was like, I, was like yeah, I do like it. But even then, I was just like, yeah, I just watch it. Um, so yeah, so the 2012 trailer came out and I was like, whoa, this is great, I have to see this. And we went to see it and oh my god, I thought it was absolutely amazing. Um, and then since then I was just like, immediately I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to do like a bit of a short film? Uh, with this kind of style, with these kind of characters and it kind of just started, you know, brainstorming from then. I started speaking to a guy who lives literally 10 minutes from me, mm -hmm. um, who was one of the first people in the UK to have a full kit already fleshed out and ready to go, you know, parading around all the Comic Cons and things. And I was... Is this, uh, is this Paul? Yeah, it's Paul, yeah. Paul LaBelle. So, right one, he was local, and instantly I was like, oh my God. Take, like, messaging on like this. Like, oh my God, yeah, I love your costume, man. Do you think I could borrow it and, you know, do a film? And he was like, no, you can't borrow it. It cost me, like, nearly £900 to make this bloody thing. And <laughs> just let some person really, that much? Like, okay. £900? Yeah. I can imagine. And um, over the course of the year, other people jumped on the bandwagon to, you know, to make all these costumes and things. And there's loads of forums and pages dedicated to this kind of craft of making. Uh, the dread kind of attire that you see and just a, such a simple look because it is literally like a leather jacket with the armor it's like a bike jacket and mm -hmm. you know the helmet and stuff and you think oh that's pretty easy it's like, oh my god runs. it is probably one of the toughest costumes i think i've seen be constructed it's just so awkward and very difficult and very uncomfortable to wear and especially kind of the helmet and things like that there have been so many variations of people 
kind of trying to craft the correct kind of shape and things. And even the, the, because unfortunately the Dread film did kind of didn't make its money back. I blame the Raid for that. The film Raid, I blame that. Like came out at the exact same time, pretty much, didn't it? Yeah. yeah well, uh, quickly, fun fact is uh, the the Raid. They kind of um, well, the script for Dread kind of got leaked online, and uh, the Raid they kind of took the premise of that and went to Indonesia where they kind of. And fleshed the whole story it, yeah. out within like a full month of it is they've already made the film because again copyright laws are very like, non-existent so they made the raid it came out first before Dread while it's still in production everyone was like five stars five stars five stars Dread came out watched copy the raid it just nosed dive straight yeah. away it didn't even have a chance so back to the point with this kind of thing is they auctioned off all their props stuck them all on eBay from prop, uh, prop master and so I was keeping an eye on it and loads of the Dread gear went for I mean, I think Dread's uh, actual whole costume for about 10 grand. Wow. Uh, but whoever got that, clever, they started screencasting those props. And then costume makers, such as my friend Paul and others in, who are much more skilled in prop making, they got mm -hmm. the moulds from it and they started uh... churning out lids and things and buckles and you know, visors and all these things and then people and then they managed to flesh out a full costume which was great for me because I was like let's make something, let's make dread. So, Excellent. I've got a little video here from uh, one of your episodes. Um Ooh, episode let's... four of Cursed Edge. Um Let me Cursed Edge being the name of the uh Dread series source. that you've directed. Yep. So um it's about halfway, about seven minutes into episode four. Okay. Yeah, uh, you I might can, I... you might recognise someone from it. Yeah, I can I can uh, lead into it and explain in a minute what what we've seen and a bit of breakdown of it. YouTube gives us a strike. <laughs> no, I've already asked for permission off uh, Ollie here. He doesn't want to use. No, you don't have permission. Oh, oh shit! What you do? Shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to know. I'm I'm not going to be interpret this with interpretive dance. You know, everything from it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um. Yeah, you might recognize someone in this uh, video. Um, I hear they're amazing. You know, I, I hear, you know... I heard that's women, a lie. I heard it's women slander. want this I guy. Women want this guy, you know, I don't know why. But, you know, it's, it's the overall um, census. But, yeah, um, if you are you guys ready to watch it? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, here we go. So, yeah, let's begin. So what's going on here, Ollie? So, okay, what we're looking at here is um, our main judge. Well, it's actually a judge from England called Britsit. He's come across the mega city and he's just about to go into interrogate. Oh, this guy. Oh, this, this guy is beautiful. I don't know anything. A little funny bit. <laughs> Ollie might remember this. While that bit's going on right there, he stood on my foot. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, he, um, I'm barefoot and he stood on it while doing that entire scene. <laughs> hey, 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 I need to judge. Back up, Judge. This isn't your case. Actually, as of now, it is my case. If you need confirmation, check with the deputy. All yours then, Judge. Label? So basically, Paul's here just to kind of interrogate Aaron because he might have some information about where this where kind of drug is coming from. Chew that scenery. Chew that scenery, scenery Alan. Sorry, uh, Aaron. Anyway. Hmm? Miles, you're chewing that scenery. <laughs> I'm so <sighs> sophisticated and mm. <laughs> and I'm angry as well. <laughs> chewing scenery. <laughs> Looks like your international career has reached a sticking point. Healthy boy. Well, fuck me. <laughs> and he does an accent as well. Shall we have a little chat? Or me? <laughs> yeah. I, I did two. I think I did two accents over this whole project. I have your word. Because I'm looking at life, if not execution here. I'm a Brexit judge. No matter what side of the pond I'm on. If I can help you, I will. If you can give something useful. But I'm here illegally. Does the name Geek Gorgon 
ring any bells. He's our main villain behind all this drug operation. Good. That's a very good start. Let's not just leave it at a nod. Go on. You know, I was pr promised more punching of Miles in the face. I think it needs that. I what think it more? needs like a slow down version where you just see the punch. The yeah, the more face. more abuse of Miles is good. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll get a shot. I'll get a shot in the leg in episode one. I'm a sick control. Thank you. Oh, evil look, Aaron. What's Gorgon doing down there? I mean, there's not much fishing to be at these days, is there? Rumor has it that they're bringing in ingredients, samples in from Britset to kickstart production and distro here in the Mech. That figures. Harder to police the ocean. Anything else I might need to know? That's it. I swear. All I knew beyond the chatter was how much powder I was going to get in and how much profit to make. Now, can we please talk about something a bit more pleasant? Like diplomatic immunity? Yeah, wait, no chance. <laughs> wait, where are you going? Immunity? Extradition? Hell! I'll do what I can for no, you. I can't promise anything. Judge LaBelle! Yeah! Yes! Kick yes. him in the face! No. Oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so, I there we have it. It's cool. we get to see everything that happened in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, like I said, in episode, in episode one, um, without ruining too much, you do get shot in the leg. I've got um, one, one quick question, actually. So, yeah. I assume the judges from uh, England have the lion crest instead of the eel crest. That is, is correct. That yes. from the comics, or is that? Uh... That is from the comics. Yes, right. and um, a good friend of ours who we've um, I've met through Paul along the way of uh, establishing this uh, little web series that I've been doing. He designed all the emblem and stuff for the right. set on that. that so really he good. took inspiration from the comic, and then we just thought, well, how can we adapt this to the grittiness of 2012? So. That's where, and it also has shoulder pads as well, and mm. things like that. So, yeah, no, done a great job. That's pretty good. Yeah, well, well, I, 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 recording that was like that day, recording that was just hilarious. Yeah, it was pretty funny because I mean, the storage unit that we're in was quite tiny, and there's probably about what seven of us kind of standing in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the floor was like so cold. So did you just oh, yeah. literally just rent a storage unit for the day and shoot that? Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, because it looked very kind of almost like a cell block. Yeah. Anyway, and I just thought, oh, I'd be great to do something. And yeah, it's cool. And no one ever sees isocubes and the isocubes basically prison isocubes in um, the dread time. Mm -hmm. And no one, you don't really see it that much in the comic because a lot of it, they kind of get shipped to another planet sometimes called Titan, where that's like, you know, if you've really fucked up bad or. You're going there and never coming back, kind of thing. So I thought, well, it'd be good to kind of do something. Maybe even if it's not like an actual ice cube, it could be just like a temporary, uh, like in solitary confinement, until obviously they should know what to do with uh, the Drick's, Aaron's character. Okay. I know, I know, again, like shooting that day was hilarious because um, Tim and Paul, who were the two judges there, are possibly two of the nicest guys that I've ever worked with. <laughs> and it's like, Tim. Just like, like beating the crap out of me, and um, you know when when I slumped down to the ground, and I got blood coming out of my mouth on me. He's like, when we finished the recording, he like comes up to me with a little uh, tish, like let me just wipe that off you. Let me just wipe. It. Like, no, no, it's fine. We'll, we'll just power on through it. We'll use it. We'll use it. He's like, hey, sure, I can wipe off. It's no problem. Oh, like, and there's and there's me in the back going, more blood, more blood, punch him again, God, more blood, punch him harder. <laughs> Contact any contact here. What are you doing? You've got a stick. Use it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was just such. It was so much fun recording that and being on that project. I mean, I, um, are you going to be doing any more after this is finished, or like any more dread? Oh, that just I don't know. 
Um, I mean, the whole Dread kind of chapter isn't... I think we're probably about halfway through it all now. Because um, the, like, each episode is more kind of like a... almost like an audience test to kind of see what people like and dislike. And the idea is then that we're going to go back and re-edit it all into one film. And that ah, means okay. reshoot bits and everything like that. And, you know, just kind of see what works and what doesn't because there will be reshoots along the way and then it's just fused into one huge film and then just you know put back out and go right guys here's the final thing and uh, the, also what we're doing is the final battle the massive shootout we're not showing that to anyone we're filming it at some point in the next couple months but we're not going to release it in the episode because if we put it into the film that gives people an incentive to rewatch it all again and they can see it all kind of stitched together and think, oh yeah, that's yeah, really I think you know, and then at the end they think, fuck the you know, because there's gonna be like thirty, forty judges attacking this kind of underground tunnel and there's just gonna be all these bad guys, you know, just getting killed and it's gonna be a proper proper war. And no one's ever seen many judges like that all together before. So yeah, it should be quite cool. Excellent. At least they're gonna be a competent Judges, unlike the nineteen, was it nineteen ninety six film? Uh, Judge uh, I, think it was, I think it was ninety ninety four, ninety five. Uh, either way, all the judges were incompetent in that movie, except for Dredd. Uh, right. Okay. The, when I watched it, but he is the uh, looking, I mean, looking it back now. Ninety five. Uh, well, over here, shall we actually, you know, you know, <laughs> earlier than normal? Should we just discuss the film? Yeah, let's just do let's that. Let's get this. Let's get this. Okay. Right. right now. Okay. I mean. I never, I never really liked it. As a, I, I did quite enjoy it as a kid, but even then, I thought it was cheesy and quite. Oh God, who is this? Who is this Rob Schneider douchebag? You know, <laughs> he's the main it's just, character. Oh, I don't care if he's in the. I know he's in the. He's the sole well, focus of the film. He should have <laughs> just been dreaded. shot straight in the face. <laughs> oh, oh it, just, it was just painful. But I mean, what they did get right was uh, the actual kind of style of it, because it is it is more or less carbon to what the style is in the comics so that was great on their behalf the style of the, everything was great it was spot right, on okay um the first 10 minutes of the film was actually pretty good the whole block wars was really good when yeah, they go was, through and it's like you know it, yeah you know um double it, par- paradise and, you know, falls or whatever it's called yeah that's it and they have the block you know and they're firing into each other which is literally an identical screen grab from the comic because you have dread in the comic, you have a shot of dread on the cover, and he's like talking into the intercom like he is in the film, and you see all the rockets shooting across into you know it was, that was really good, and and here yeah talking to Lawgiver and you know taking out the bad guys kind of thing, you know it was a little bit kind of hammy, but what? it was passable. But the biggest point where it just nosedived and crashed completely is when he took the helmet off. You did. Uh- just, yes. it just, it yeah, just thought, that's no, the whole it. point. Absolutely, it was just like no, because no one has ever seen Dread's face yeah, ever, yeah. and the idea is meant to represent the facelessness of the law kind of thing, you know, almost like a, you know, yeah, it, it just no, nah, they did it, and it was just like no, nah, I'm just looking at Stallone, just going, like the whole fucking film, it's just yeah. <laughs> what I didn't understand at the start was why there are like these block wars. What what is actually starting that? It's never. Well, they, it's just territories because just... with the mega blocks, you know, they house the whole cities in them. Right. So okay. it'd just be like I don't know, Worthing fighting Brighton or something like that, and the buildings are having to be next to each other. It's imagine, just, imagine like... the derby, you know, United and City. That's that's uh, right. Okay. The best way to put it. <laughs> but with weapons. <laughs> but with guns what, the, and Rob Schneider. Just dread use less. That's what started it. Rob Schneider came over and was like, "Oh shit, Rob Schneider's here." <laughs> Fuck yeah. you, can have him. No, you yeah. can have him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, for me, it's, like, it's one of the few films that I really enjoy Rob Schneider. Like, he might not fit in with the whole, you know, style of it and people yeah. disagree about it, but I loved him in it. You know, for me, it's like... The, he was a lot less of films. Good, if a film's entertaining, things. I don't care so much about how much it differs from material sorts, from source material or whatever. I just think, I just think it just... Because, again, it was also PG-13, so they really did kind of... It's 15, you know, wasn't it? <sighs> I wouldn't even say it's a 15. I mean, I don't know. You don't really see that much. It's just a lot of, like, shots with blood pouring out somewhere, but you don't just blood falling to the ground. It's not... You don't really see any entry holes as such, or blood entry holes. It's quite an early film. It's 95, so they don't have the same... uh, impact. I mean, so today's standard, it would be like a 12A. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I probably say PG because some Disney films <laughs> are much yeah, more, why more harrowing to kids then. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the first 10 minutes, I thought, it's, you know, if they kind of kept that tone throughout all of it, it would be a passable dread film at best, you know. But they just, you know, just took the helmet off and it just went, what the fuck? Completely, <laughs> just watching it, just them running around and, yeah, Rob Schneider just being a liability every week he was walking. Was just, oh. <laughs> but then the film Dread 2012 came out and it was amazing. I just thought it was so well done. And mm. I just hope that one day it gets to, you know, another chance. Because the things like kind of Deadpool, that's kind of been a, a successful R-rated film. I hope producers kind of have that more kind of gut instinct to kind of, and have that bit more confidence in other properties to do that kind of stuff and knowing that there is an audience out there for R-rated and to, if it's done well. And I think Dread came out, I just, I think a bit of a wrong time. And it just everything was against it, and it's limited. Yeah, so it came out like sense. when all the comic book movies were coming a bit well campy yeah. at the time. So what? That's like the same time as Batman and Robin, that, which is yeah. like the superiest, campiest movie ever Whoa. made. Batman and Robin is uh, amazing film. You're movie. right, Russell. Carry on with your point. Amazing film. <laughs> so I read a review for Batman v Superman, and someone said the Batman and Robin was much more enjoyable than Batman v Superman. I'm like, um, and they and the even reviewer said yes. I even take the bat nipples any day. I feel like I'm the only person, you know. I know again, you know. By the way, Russell, you forgot to notice that last week was the first podcast where I didn't mention Batman. You know, we not Batman wasn't mentioned. And and it was a superior podcast, I have to say, that episode. I don't know, I'm pretty sure we all mentioned Batman vs Superman at some point. May have, but we didn't go into my usual tangent. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I'm the only person that enjoys Batman and Robin. You know, I feel like I'm yeah, an yeah, isolated enjoys person Enjoys can be in the taken world. in very different ways. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy how I enjoy is. taking the piss out of it. So yeah, then exactly. at that point, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, if you're intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> Like they're smashed on the sofa. I remember being so for. excited going and watching Batman and Robin with my granddad in the cinema. And your granddad, your granddad goes, What the fuck have I taken hey, this? Yeah, shit what are you on about? <laughs> Alicia Silverstone. This is the last time I've taken you to the cinema. <laughs> you never put the movie again. It's not as good as the Adam West movie. Now that was the best one. Oh, no. Hey, the, what, the muffin to top era. <laughs> Oh. I'm dreading. I'm dreading when that comes up on the media wheel. That Adam West I'm movie. I love it. No. Yes. I'm so looking at it on my shelf and I'm thinking, I really hope that stays on there as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Who picked one, that one again? Was it you, Max? That was Max. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. I Max was tempted, funny. but then I don't need to. Exactly. But yeah, back uh, back to Judge Dredd. You know. I, like I, I remember looking at it, it's like that's like watching it again. I was like, wow, there are actually it's quite a few good actors in this one, you know, because you got Stallone, yeah. you know, you got Schneider, which is. I my had the opinion. opportunity. But you also had like um. Opportunity, but for me, you had like you had um, what's his name, Jurgen Pron Proch. Now I can't remember like what his name was. He was Judge uh, Judge Griffin. It's like wow, I grew up watching him in Beverly Hills Cop Two, you know, because he was the main in villain in that. And then you have um. Max von, I always yeah. don't know how to pronounce it. Sidow, Sidow, you know he's in it. You know Chief Justice. I wish he had a bigger role in uh, Force Awakens because yes. start and oh, it would have been amazing if he lived. You know, find out he's like a Jedi or something like that. I mean, fucking well, awesome. originally he was supposed to. Apparently, he was supposed to play a much bigger role, but for some reason they just killed him. Uh, yeah, well, it's fine. We got Poe Dameron. We got Poe Dameron. <laughs> you know, I'm happy with that. Yeah, I didn't like Finn. I didn't like Ray. So, can we can no we say it? I don't think the person, uh, what's her name now? Ray. Well, no, sorry, the, the, actress. the actress. Daisy Ridley. Daisy Ridley isn't particularly oh. talented. No, no even she Jada Jada Abram. Abram. feels like a stage actor because she announces Jada everything Abrams. so uh, much. J.J. And... Abrams even said to uh, had, on the first day, said you're so wooden. Yeah. Why did they hire yeah. you? Yeah. Hollywood's producers, if producers put in money, they think, right, let's pick someone who's like a Kira Knightley, Natalie Portman hybrid discount. Uh, <laughs> and we thought, let's stick her in the forefront. And, Make sure she's uh, English as well, because. Uh, yeah, you know, have that. Dig that stuff. Yeah. But I, I, I thought Finn was great. Finn's yeah. good. I did like Finn. Yeah. John Boyega, I thought his role was amazing. I, liked, I did who like Poe. Who, uh, Russell, I, you're Another like. thing which I was completely sorry to try, I was just like, oh my God. 
missed opportunity. They should, Captain Phasma was so wasted. They should have had yes. her be the traitor scene with the nightstick. They, that that fight should have been with her fighting Finn. I, I yeah. agree with that. I, I think, think that I think, I think that we said that, that in the first podcast. Yeah. Didn't we? yeah. <laughs> Did you say? Well, I mean, it was such a missed opportunity. It was. Captain, you know, even if they Captain Phasma got the shot, so hard. Yeah. she didn't do anything in the movie. It's like, look at this character. Isn't she cool? Yeah, you know, she and she's it's like, got she five could minutes of screen shot. time. It's, well, I she think could it, have been I, shot, and then, and the armor could have been used as like, with it being silver armor, you know, they could have used an excuse of how it got, you know, the the bolt was partially reflected because well, of yeah, the armor. Because, yeah, that would have, you know, that would have been okay. She survived. Yeah, she would have been knocked back. Like hit by Chewie's crossbolt, being boom, knocked back and kind of knocked unconscious. But and shot again, first. yeah, and then just have the whole kind of armor. Obviously, yeah, it takes a hit and there's a whole like, sizzling away, but because it's, it's obviously like a probably a much more uh, I think precious metal. Or something the whole like point of her was really toys. She's well, toys. <laughs> Because she's the new Boba Fett. Boba Fett does nothing yeah, yeah, exactly. in all the trilogies, so this is the equivalent Whoa. of it. Whoa, what are you on about? Of toys, Boba you Fett just... does bugger uh, yeah. all. His Speaking daddy toys, did everything. The red armed 3 CPO pissed me off something royal. Because that was literally, oh, we need a new 3 CPO toy. Okay, here's uh, something. Give him a red oh, arm, that'll do it. And make him slightly I, fatter I think, as well. I think we need a tell... sat, fat C3PO, yeah. that's what we need. Yeah. See, so I have. I have a theory behind C-3PO's arm. I mean, it's probably written in the books or the watching, new extended universe, which I can't be asked reading. He was playing got... Phantom Pain? Um, yeah, <laughs> Phantom Pain. Um, <laughs> there was an image not released quite a while ago of um, Hide- Hideo Kojima and um, J.J. Abrams together with a signed uh, copy uh, of the new uh. Metal Gear Solid. And funnily enough, C-3PO's lovely red arm is the same red arm that um, Snake has in the new game. It's the same color and it's the same arm. I'm sure so I'm thinking that might be. <laughs> I reckon that might be a little kind of Easter egg in there. But again, it, you know, a throwaway line could have explained why he's got a fucking red arm. Yeah. They I mean, wanted I, to I, sell I, more toys. Yeah, that's that. And again, I think CPPO and R2, they didn't even need to be in the film. BB8 was, I thought, was amazing. Oh, okay. yeah. It, it was just. It, Best it just, or Poe Dameron. It was just. BB8 was fantastic. Poe Dameron. Yeah. Oh, and the whole kind of lighter thing with a thumbs up, I thought that was just hilarious. That was so good. I really hope Paul Dameron's in Rogue One. I really do. Oh, he's, no, he's, he's not going to be. He's Rogue too young. Years before, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm not... too, too young as in he's a <laughs> sperm not... and an egg. He could be. Though. Oh. Could yeah, be he's still <laughs> swimming around. He's he the only little racing. granddaddy Cosmos thing. There you go, Marcy. Pod racing. That he's practicing, you see. No, I'm, <laughs> actually, I'm, I'm upset now. The Rogue uh-huh. One, it is set when they still the plans for the Death Star. So you probably get Darth Vader to come back. But then again, the point, uh, really, what really kind of really did piss me off a little bit was, uh, again, Death Star, you know, what the fuck? It, and then now with Rogue One, Super again, Death, Death Star. Star. It's just, come I've, on. I've not read uh, anything on Rogue One. I'm literally like, so I love Star Wars. I just kind of wait for the films to come out now because, you know, as a, you know, I, I love reading the old Star Wars books. That's my universe. I like to live in that one. But I will watch the new films and I will enjoy the new films. But as for it, like but bits in between to explain it, for you now I've got I've got, I've got hundred plus books to read still from the old one. In oh, Force God. Awakens, um, there was a bit I kind of had a bit of a kind of foreshadowing, kind of stab in the dark. Of I was thinking like, like in just again because you see John Boyega light up the lightsaber in the trailer and he you knows he's going to have a fight with uh, Kylo Ren, which he does in the film. And I thought, oh, would it be cool? Like, okay, John Vega, I can't, I don't see him getting killed. Or, you know, he'd probably get down, hurt, fall down. And then I had the image of like, oh, it'd be cool if he goes to reach for the lightsaber because he wanted Luke Skywalker's lightsaber because he's a bit of like a Nazi enthusiast, but for the Empire mm-hmm. wanting, you know, a new lightsaber because his is dodgy and custom made, well, it's so unstable. So he wanted that to have a proper, decent, legitimate lightsaber. And I thought, oh, it'd be great if he force pulled it, which it happened in the film. He went to go for it, but it flew past him. And I wanted it to fly past him. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if it landed in Luke Skywalker's hand? Luke Skywalker turns up in the dark. You don't see his face. Green lights that ignite in the shadows. Literally just bitch slaps Kylo Ren. Almost kind of make, make mockery of him. Like, you're no Jedi. You're no Sith. You're just a fucking kid kind of thing, which I thought would have been great. Meanwhile, Daisy Ridley's on the floor kind of, you know, coming out of the unconsciousness, seeing this kind of shadow. Mm-hmm. And I, I would have loved it if... Um, Luke, 
obviously you get the whole kind of passing of the planet because it's you know about to collapse and come because they destroy the Death Star core. You know, he picks up Daisy Ridley, Ray's character, and takes her back to um, you know the Jedi planet where it is, and that's yeah. that'd be a really good incentive for the others like Leia and Chewbacca and all the other ones, and you know, and Finn when he recovers to go and you know track her down and. Oh, I just thought that'd be so much better because again, Luke looks so cool at the end. I know he's aged like hell, and you think, "Whoa!" You know. I thought that was the worst bit of the film. But I just, I just wish they kind of used him a bit more. I just thought it'd be cool if he showed up in the forest and then again. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh, I think uh, Daisy Ridley, Ray, just—they just completely made it into the the Mary Sue argument. Yeah. Yeah, I'm no, like, totally. she's she she Mary Sue, I'm and I'm like, she she learns yeah. everything in matter yeah. of minutes. I'm just like, like, what the it. fuck's this? This is I ridiculous. Liked, I like the potential that she could be powerful. Like when he was uh, the mind between Kylo and her, that was quite good. I really did enjoy that because that shows all like when she gets Luke's training. You know, mm. she's going to be a really powerful asset at some point. And even so the Supreme Leader Snoke says that as well. We should try and convert her to to us. But her fighting, I'm just like, uh, you, what? You're not even fucking trained. Okay, you have a staff, but what are you going to do? Um, Finn, I buy Finn because he's been trained as a stormtrooper. Yeah. He's tra- training combat, even though his is much more rustic. He gave it a good shot, and mm. you could see that. And But I thought Ray, I just thought they were banking too much on her, and I just thought, yeah. It just, yeah. Still a banger, though. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Oh, uh, now it would be the Starlight pick for her for me. <laughs> straight in. <laughs> this is Sparta kind of boot. Boot uh, you know, off, yeah. Straight in, yep. <laughs> Say hello to Boba Fett for me. Boom. Yeah. Give my regards. Not about this one. Not about this one. Skywalker Boba Fett, so. sent their regards. <laughs> yeah. Depends, Miles. We're not using the expanded universe anymore. <laughs> no, Disney have said that he survived. Disney have said it, yeah. really? Because he's going to be... The announced that there's a Boba Fett film coming out in about three more years. Oh, 2020. 2020, yeah. Oh, okay. Boba Fett film. But yeah, they announced... Because um, oh, that was a big question that's... of whether he survived or not. But yeah, they announced officially that he was going to be... Oh, right. I thought it was like a young Han Solo with the young Boba Fett sort of thing going on. Not. <laughs> what? <laughs> there was a young Han Solo movie. Yeah, there's a Han Solo film coming out. That's the next filler. Oh, young know. Han Solo, like the un- young Indiana that? Jones. Young Han Solo, he shoots first. <laughs> That's what she said. I don't know if they do, anymore. do you think they'll ever uh, talk about that being shoot- him shooting first in Disney? Disney, world. Disney, Disney, Disney. Oh Disney god, world. they'll find anything to fucking shoot on it. Uh, Disney <laughs> yeah. is just like. <laughs> Yeah, all the economy in the planet is like, we have no money. It's going to tax everyone. Fucking Disney got to own Marvel. Uh, was it Star Wars now? Pixar? They've yeah. literally, they probably got mounds. They've got fucking Scrooge McDuck's fucking vault under Disney. Disney is the Empire. Wait, it's oh, about. exactly. They've got such, they're trillions. Maybe they're going to build their own Death Star. Exactly. Starkiller Base is Mickey in uh, LA right now. Giant <laughs> Mickey head. Yeah, follow, well, out, follow out the moon. Um, did you hear what they've announced recently as well, though? Disney. I can't remember if it's in Florida or California, but um, at one of their theme parks, they're now building a Star Wars theme park. Yeah, I've yeah. heard about this. Which I need to go to. <laughs> well, Lightyear like, will be there. Pardon? Um, I, I'll show well, you. I'm um, making it, a I, Kylo I, Ren helmet. Well, at, at Disney um, Disney Studios, it's now called, when it used to be MGM Studios. One there is a well. giant... Um, Fuck off, Whenever I talk, Russell just leaves. <laughs> it's like, fuck you, Bats. <laughs> I'm so lonely. I'm so lonely. Right, let me show you what I've been working on. Sorry, one second. Fucking, you know, Russell just gets up and walks off whenever I'm yeah. telling something. He always does this. But your helmet's a bit dusty, just start pointing that out. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's in the house. House. No, it's you're not allowed your crown. You're not allowed to take your crown off. You've not won anything. I've won staying here. There you go. I'll put this on to see if Russell notices when he comes back. There you go. We need to sort out cards against humanity, but I'm wondering how Oliver's going to play. Oh, fucking hell, Oliver's got his helmet on. I didn't even see him put the helmet on. Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> For the for, for record, please say, Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Hey! <laughs> Space references. 
How comfortable is that helmet? Right, hang on. I might. Oh, where's my mask? Hang on. I think I've got a mask somewhere that I can put on. <laughs> the map. Where is it? <laughs> oh, here he is. <laughs> There you go. What the fuck have I come back to? <laughs> hello! Well, welcome to Theatre Times Master. Oh, hello there, Ross. Hello! Max, is that it's like a Lego start. Aliens? It is, yes. Wow. I have all sorts of crap. You do, you do. You are a <laughs> colossal nerd. Yes, thank you. And Miles, well done for having... Uh, well, thanks for trying, Miles, basically. <laughs> <laughs> is that a full... Kylo Ren mask as well, of her, like... Yeah, it's, in, it's work in progress. Nope, nope. Oh. <gasps> it was Oliver the whole oh time! <laughs> he didn't look like him. <laughs> oh, well, actually, I think he's a little bit better looking than Adam Driver. Oh, God. Uh, just recently had plastic surgery. Oh, it's Miles! <laughs> Don't make me started on Adam. Yeah, it's a work in progress for the helmet. Ah, uh, okay. Is Adam it made from... Is awesome it... Motherfucker. Is it made from like the uh, the toy mask, or is that just like? Yeah, I yeah. bought. Um, well, it was actually made from like two versions. Um, it's kind of like half what well, it's half and half of one mask and the other. Because the one that they have, for the Hasbro, which is about hundred quid, I've seen reviews and people wear it. It looks fucking huge because obviously heads, people's heads has and, to be. You know, it's big different size, everyone. so it needs to be universal. Yeah. Yeah, you're not, you've got like, heads as big as mine, eh? You know? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that I thought, watermelon. Oh, that's that's yeah, what, yeah, Look at that watermelon. Helmets. And craft, and then I started uh, sculpting the back part, and you know, and so it just fits really nice and snug with my face. Um, so it is in proportion to my head size. So it's yeah, good. Really good. Excellent. Well, I'm loving the seg. I'm, lo I'm loving the segways we're getting on here. We've, we've, we've segued <laughs> in quite a lot. But um, yeah, Ollie, you're uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you're also working on another project. Do you want to fill us in on that one? Yes. Well, I decided to do a Star Wars short film as well um i always wanted to kind of do one ages ago but it kind of star wars after revenge of the sith it kind of really left a bit of a shit taste in people's mouths mm. and it kind of plummeted a little bit and i was like nah, yeah, forget it kind of thing but um oh oh, 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 oh. someone pause it yeah i'm pausing it because someone keeps pushing it <laughs> I I heard something. Me, i'm sorry <laughs> But yeah, I was saying, um, so yeah, so recently after the film, I thought it'd be cool to do a Star Wars short film. But I thought, of what? I didn't know what to do. I mean... Jar Jar um, Binks, of course! <laughs> yes. Adventures of Jar Jar! Who oh yeah, because that's... Oh, no, no that's... the misadventures of Jar Jar. Ah, yes! Oh god. <laughs> but... It goes on like a massive crack <laughs> rage and everything. And... Oh my yes. god. That would just be, so, I don't know, <laughs> be tragic. Um... So, yeah, um, I mean, they've done so many Darth Vaders. I mean, they just did the Darth Maul one, you know, just came out, which is pretty epic. And they've, you know, done so many th things with the Empire and all these, oh, that's what, oh, I'm always something slightly different. They've done, you know, Clone Trooper. Oh, it's kind of mulling around the internet. And I came across a story, which is um, a series of comics called Open Seasons, which is with uh, Django Fett and the kind of Mandalorians, mm. pre, uh, pre, you know, before the prequels, about okay. 30 yeah, years before. So about uh, if I remember, I think Galadron <clears throat> is 45 or 44 years BBY in Star Wars. Yeah, which means ba battle before Yevin in Star Wars. Now, I, you know, I want to go on a rant here because this is something that really I'm finding like <laughs> random. Why the fudge in Star Wars does the, you know, we know it's been a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but somehow in the future, you know, the the like the, the whole thing's been around for thousands of years. The Republic mm -hmm. started for okay. thousands of years. But the actual timeline in Star Wars starts from episode <clears> four, <throat> from the Battle of Yevin. It starts from the Battle of the First Death Death Star. But so everything around that period is either like um a Return of the Jedi is like four or six years after class has been like six years after Battle of Yevin. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, Revenge of the Sith is 19 years before Battle of Yevin. So they all have this, like, whereas we have um, a, um, BC, BC and AD, yeah. um, Star Wars has BBY and ABY. And I'm always like, that just doesn't make 
make sense? <laughs> Why would you suddenly, as a galaxy, it doesn't make decide... sense if the story concept were to people watching? It gives them an, uh, a way to identify a point where the timeline is and where it isn't. I agree with that, and that would be great. But in some of the in some of the uh, in the now non-canon um, universe, they reference the dates in the stories. Oh, okay. Which kind of again makes me wonder why in <clears throat> your galaxy have you suddenly decided the first test I was struck right today, guys? You know, Chinese New Year, start from zero, everything happens <laughs> now. You know, suddenly it's just like we're gonna fuck up our entire calendar, we're gonna fuck everything up and start again. Okay, start again fresh in the middle of this war. We're gonna start <laughs> fresh, guys. How does that sound? <laughs> Sounds it's like, like it's like when one of our battleships it. sank and then suddenly yeah. we went Are you sure it was this like is where it starts year that. zero starts today yeah i reckon other jedis went around and it is year zero and they went oh it's oh. year zero shit <laughs> imagine like, like fuck like, what's consensus here guys what it's a, it's a bad idea bad idea yeah tough shit the calendars are already printed <laughs> carry on it's the empire trying to shift calendars to making you death star that's what it is um, yeah, and I just like always bugged me, but yeah, the um, the Battle of Galadran, which um, all has been doing the project on, takes place roughly, if I remember, it's between 44, I think it's about 44 or 45 years, if I remember correctly, but it's, it's around the time where, um, you, know, you, you probably know, Ollie, do you want to yeah. tell it? Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, I came across a story, I mean, it's just a. It's a one comic, which again, there's loads of um, it's followed with Jango Fett's um, uh, with his Mandalorians, and there's loads of little stories that kind of follow it. But this one I thought was really cool because it's um, it has uh, Count Dooku when he was a master, Jedi oh, master, okay. and him kind of first coming into contact with uh, stopping Jango Fett. And it was just interesting just reading, like, oh, well, years later, these guys are gonna you know work together, mm. as it were, you know, in the back yeah, of it's where they, kind uh... of thing. It's where they first meet, if I believe, as well, isn't it? Like, yeah, that is they, it. Yeah. They know of each other, but because uh, Jango Fett is the Mandalore for the Mandalorians, yeah. and obviously Count Dooku is Count Dooku at this point before Darth Tyrannus. So, yeah, so obviously he, both he, their he reputations rides with their, That's great. And then, yeah, so he hands with a handful of uh, kind of Jedi, you know, to kind of stop the Mandalorians. But um, what kind of happens is that, you know, it's kind of going to be a quick confrontation, but it ends up being a bit of a a bloodbath and a lot of you know lots of Mandalorians slaughtered and loads of a lot of the Jedi die as well and it's almost kind of just like oh my god it's, it's going to be quite primal and quite a bit visceral at times and it's almost kind of tapping into that kind of dark side as, as it were not not like of it too obviously but just to be like holy shit every whatever even a Jedi are capable of uh, doing something a bit uh, yeah you know it, Unethical at times. When, um... So is this set during the like the Mandalorian War, or like? Yeah. Man um, the Mandalorian War was thousands <clears throat> of years ago. Oh, like, so it was really okay. That's the Republic. The Mandalorian War is years ago, but there is um, in the universe there is a distaste. Mandalorians hate um, any Sith user. They absolutely hate them. Any Force user, sorry, they absolutely hate them because. That's um, racist. Uh, um, the Mandalorian fight style is they're very honourable. Like even though they're portrayed as being barbarians, mm. they're very honourable in fighting. That's, the how, that's how they live. Yeah, they're essentially kind of like the Klingons, but better and less ugly. <laughs> um, and cooler armor. Yeah, a lot cooler armor. But, they didn't um, have a battle list though. They don't have Worf. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they have Boba Fett. But battle list. But Worf lived longer. <laughs> <laughs> what did Worf live for? He, he didn't die in a Sonic fit. <laughs> Neither did Boba. Sure. No. Uh, sure. No. Boba Fett's like 86 now. Fuck me. When the old canon ended, it's about 86. Because they um, the cloning process is starting to deteriorate now in all the living clones. Uh. There, was very, there was very few um, clones that were left unaltered. Boba Fett being the first, so all of the um, genetics and all the process is starting to deteriorate now, and they're starting to get ill. Essentially, Boba Fett starts suffering from arthritis. But yeah, like the the thing is with like the, the way they fight as well with Mandalorians, they they train nonstop to kill um, uh, Force users, you know, 
whatever side they're on, because essentially they're like mercenaries as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the defiant style is very, um, like in the books, it's very brutal. Yeah, we have, um, uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct. And um, um, the Mandalorians that we have when we did the filming, they, they have loads of different styles and weaponry as well. Some of them have uh, kind of um, bladed weapons and things that are obviously made with a particular metal that can actually block a uh, saber blade. That's so it adds a bit, so it adds a bit more of a dynamic when it comes through. And so we've got a couple of blasts and jetpacks, but most of them are grounded. Kind of um, a bit of inspiration, like you know, like Predator. You know, they have the different variations to the kind of armor. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the kind of style we're going for. So yeah, that no, should be pretty cool. Yeah, the best, the best, the thing I love most about like the um, the way they fight is uh, one of my favorite bits in the books is basically in in my favorite story arc when Jaina Solo is training to kill. Jason Solo. Um, Who are all these characters? No one knows. Well, Jason and Jaina were we, Leia we, and Han. We, we know, kids. but other people don't know. Oh, okay. Basically, uh, Han and Leia have three kids in this other universe. Anakin um, being the third born, and then they have twins, um, Jason and Jaina. You know, Anakin gets blown up in some big irrelevant war. Completely <clears> irrelevant. <throat> and eventually the twins live on, and eventually Jason becomes corrupted by the force because he becomes the most powerful like force conduit he goes off on some kind of pilgrimage sees everything uh, and comes back gets corrupted by um completely forgot her name now basically luke skywalker's ex-girlfriend who is essentially yeah, now a female darth vader and eventually he takes over the republic you know becomes the new head of state uh, commander solo you know creates this gets this commission like star destroyer black star destroyer names it after his brother everyone's like oh no this isn't right mm -hmm. eventually you know there's rebellion start happening people try to start getting out of power and eventually it's now clear jason is a sith lord he's now going by the name of darth kydus which is a cool last name and eventually Jay, uh, jane is like there was a prophecy at this at some point i'm the sword of the jedi Maybe I should start actually trying to, you know, fight my brother. I don't want to. But hey, <laughs> who's good at fighting Jedi? Boba Fett. Oh, shit. So she goes to Mandalore. It's like Boba Fett, who's now in charge of all the Mandalorians. Boba Fett, please train me. No. Boba Fett, please train me. No. Boba Fett, please train me. Okay, well, you know, he killed my daughter. He killed, you know, he's paralyzed my uh, granddaughter. You know, I uh, probably should teach you how to fight. So he, the, the, I love this bit. It was like, <clears throat> fight me. She pulls out the lightsaber and she's like, I'm not going to fight you unarmed. Fight me. No, you're unarmed. Okay, one second. Goes into Slave 1 and it describes it. He's got like a cabinet just full of lightsabers. And he picks out this proper ceremonial style gold plated one. Comes out with it. Lights it up. I think, I think he, like, he stands there and he's like, Come on then. He deactivates it. Jaina comes for him. And he just got punches her and drops her in one blow. And then just walks off. Mm -hmm. And then eventually like he trains her how to fight and you know he she wins. It's very sad. But that's just the favorite moment where she just drop where he just drops her in one punch. Yeah, yeah, it's not very skill. <clears throat> but um going on from this I have another video which is the trailer. For... Oh, yeah, no teaser, yes. Ooh. Yes, the Battle of Star Wars, the Battle of Galadran. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's go for it. I was born ready. Interesting. Just a bit of a flavour of what to expect. 
Are you currently uh, filming that now, or...? Yeah, it's currently filming. Doing a... Okay. You're doing a shoot on Saturday, was it? That is correct. One of many. <laughs> Does Jar Jar make an appearance? Is that sorry? Is Jar Jar making Jar Jar's appearance? not born at this point, I don't uh... think, so... Is Jar Jar's yeah, dad making an appearance? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we've landed on the planet. We're just going to actually just chuck loads of hand grenades down into ponds and hope to destroy the fucking rock. It's going to be grievous now, isn't it? <laughs> So what uh, you know? What was it that made you you know out of all the expanded universe? You know you've got loads of you you could have gone into any direction. You could have gone with any skirmish, original, non-original, fan fiction or whatever it was. What made you choose? That what was it that made you choose this one in particular? Then. <clears throat> um, I I mean I, you know I mean there's some bits of the prequel which I really enjoy. Um, I mean, there's some really good bits, and I think there's some bits in the prequels that I think probably did better than, you know, Force Awakens. Uh, it's not much, but um, there's some bits. It's so much Jar Jar. Oh, yeah, definitely. Jar-Jar. That was the highlight. Oh, Will you amazing. shut up about Jar Jar, Max? <laughs> <laughs> it's really annoying. Just throwing that out there. But, um, Even referencing him is an insult. I did, um, I mean, Crystal Lee is such a legend. Um, and, you know, I mean,. I just wish I, I wish they didn't kill him off so quickly in Revenge of the Sith, and he just kind of I think he just got really kind of just shoehorned onto the you know stuck to the side, and I just they didn't do much with him. Whether I don't know he just didn't want to or was too old. Or well, he was this... um, he was very ill at the time of filming that. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like the last uh, last you know couple of years of his life, so he's been quite ill. Like during um, the Hobbit. Yeah, they he, he was in immensely Pinewood. ill. During the Hobbit, they had they even shipped some of the uh, sets to uh, Pinewood, yeah, and filmed the sequence there, which mirrored the shots that you see in the Hobbit um, well, back okay. in New Zealand. But yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, again, it just it was one of those characters I did enjoy. And I just, so sore, just... please. Don't want to make a mess in front of the Chancellor now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So there's a deleted scene in Episode Two where. It's really annoying that they took this out. Uh, it's it's the convincing of Obi Wan to come come join him. Yes, yeah, I haven't seen this to this yet. So you, you only see it because it's really weird. Like some Star Wars movies, they have the theatrical uh, theatrical cut, and then they have their little home video cut. And yeah. this is one of the scenes that they cut. And explains so much of the movie and gives it so much more depth, and they just cut that straight yeah, out. George Lucas, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, like great, George, we didn't thanks. we didn't find out more about Qui Gon's relationship with the master, Count, yeah, with Count exactly, Dooku, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was like I w- would have liked to have known a bit more because again, they had they had a very close relationship and they shared a lot of views. You know, very not anti political, but kind of they didn't quite appreciate how the political um, theatre is in that universe Mm -hmm. which is why for example um, it's referenced in the first film that like Gwagon is not on the council because of his views yeah he's he's very anti not anti-establishment not rebellious but he's strong opinionated he doesn't appreciate it Mm So yeah, it's like what well, it's just one of those things that I was just a bit annoyed that they removed it for like the home, the home cut. There's a whole, there's loads of scenes uh, with where Anakin and uh, goes to like Padme's house and Naboo, and he meets the parents <clears throat> and all that sort of stuff. And like, so anything relationship building that isn't weird and <laughs> cliche, yeah, and stalkerish, yeah, they've. C- They've cut that out and left all... Okay, okay, so they just left all the weird stuff in here. Oh, right. Thanks, thanks, George. Yeah, like, they I had mean... talks with his father about, please protect my daughters, just like, Aiden Padme's very, uh, you know, very close to me and stuff like that. You know, the actual, actual like, character yeah. interaction that isn't just cliche bullshit. They just, they've cut it. It's just like, oh. Not that she needs protected much. You know, she's highly skilled as it is. She can dodge uh, any, what's it, droid factory so th- this, this <laughs> stuff. This is something that annoyed me. This is something that annoyed me. And it was, um, it's referenced, I think it's referenced to one of the deleted scenes in the first film, but it goes into a lot more depth in the book. 
is the fact that the, the Queen and the Handmaidens, they go through such a rigorous course of like self-defense and training. They go through like proper militarized training to like defend themselves. It's like we, we barely see any of that. We see the And then we get trade federation bollocks in council meetings, you know, it's oh. <laughs> But um little random fun fact. Um mine and um Kiani's fighting teacher at a university was one of the fight directors in Revenge of the Sith. Oh, nice. oh, okay. And his teacher, Bob Anderson, was the fight director in Empire Strikes Back. Wow. Bob Anderson, sweet. So, cool. Aaron, will you be teaching people in Star Wars 10? Well, I would, the thing is... Like, <laughs> Star Wars 10, oh, God. <laughs> believe it or not, that's why I took up stage combat. It's like, I love stage combat. Mm -hmm. It comes naturally to me, but it's like, I've loved Star Wars. Absolutely love it. And one like the goal for me, if I was, you know, if I want to keep carrying on the stage combat, so I've been I've done courses with the APC, the Academy of Performance Combat. And um, when I move back up north, I want to carry on doing courses with them. You know, it's something that I would love to eventually get to, like to choreograph a lightsaber duel in Star Wars. You know, it's something that I would just it's a, it's a dream that I have, you know, whether it'll happen, don't know. But yeah, it's I, very um It's becoming that kind of cliched now. It'll be harder for me to do, but mm -hmm. you know. It is it is tricky though because um I have done a couple of um, uh film extra roles and uh, one of them was um like a medieval uh drama that's gonna come out and it's got it's I think it comes out end of the year or start of next year. It's, with, uh, it's called The Hollow Crown. It's got Benedict Cumberbatch in it. But in this, we, I uh, did this village scene where I get stabbed and killed. And we were, I mean, the first day is like a war in the village, and everyone's all like, yeah, woo, swords him up. By the end of it, everyone's dead, lying in the cold by day three, just bleeding out. And uh, and you kind of have a word with these guys. And again, like what you're saying, Aaron, is you kind of need to keep on top of doing all these courses because the more advanced you get, the more, because you see how the main character fighting a stunt guy, then you've got a, a, about five or six people standing in the mid ground. These are ones who are like advanced stage, mm -hmm. who who know, who have a backlog of, of sequences in their mind, which they can, you know, this other person's done the same thing as say what you're doing, Aaron. You both know, go, right, okay, we'll do one, two, three, four, yep. you know, sequence five of that. And you'll know it, and you'll be able to just do it straight away. And as you get further into the radius, which falls into the background, where you end up being such a blur, that, you know, that's where it goes down the stages, back to stage yeah. one. You're literally on, like, you'll you, you, you'll go down from repeating the same kind of shoulder attack yeah. for the block. Dun, dun, as you go dun. forward, like, you know, you've got a sequence of head, shoulder, shoulder, leg, leg. Yeah. And you'll, you'll just re repeat the sequence and the block. Yeah, and you'll be in the background. And as, you, and as you go further back, the number of, like... Uh, movements you'll do will go less. And in the things that if you haven't done um, any of the, the any of the levels, they won't let you touch a sword. They go, no, you can't touch it. Not even a rubber. No, you even say, okay, oh, a rubber one. No, won't touch it. Maybe off because the uh, show, um, like, like the complete different style of swords, just made me laugh. Was uh, when we when we were doing Pippin. Yeah. Um, the swords, the, the sword I had was uh, I had a bastard sword, and. That just made me laugh. What's a bastard sword? What's, what's, what's that? Mean? Um, you you have different that... like length of swords. Um, is that the double? Sword, is that the double? Long one? sword, hand and a half. Um, yeah. bastard sword is. Oh, it's one hand. Isn't I it? couldn't remember. I think one hand. I was using. Then one you got hand a sword, which is like yeah, you got two and a bit. Like, then you've got like claymore, which is like the mountain in mm. Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> Cuts the horse's head off. Like, oh. Yeah. It, <laughs> um. Yeah. You've just got a different style of swords and different handles. It's. There's a lot more than what people think about swords. Oh yeah, I, know, I knew there was different like yeah. hilt handles for different lengths and stuff. So generally, most of the I've never most heard of the bastard see, sword. Uh, most films that you see is bastard swords. swords. Like, well, those JRPGs have finally taught me something. Like you, you watch Game of Thrones, don't you, Russell? Mm -hmm. um, Longclaw is a bastard sword. Jon Snow sword. Okay, that's a bastard sword. Um, Obviously, you got like the mountain with his with his, with his claymore. <laughs> That's just a joke. What? <laughs> That's so, just like, a joke. Like, yeah. Also, oh, do you think uh, Ollie looks a bit like uh, someone out of Game of Thrones? Some sort of bastard. A bastard. 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 With my horn mug. <laughs> um. 
But yeah, there's like there's something that I want to go down like uh, stage comedy because I love doing it. Obviously, because I like I've grown up watching these style of films. I've grown up watching wrestling. To me, stage combat, whether it be unarmed, short sword, rapier, quarter staff. I, I just love doing it. I love picking it up. I love getting in there. Mm-hmm. And like the, the work going into that is ridiculous. Um, when I did my exam now, which my qualifications now are actually um, expired now. I need to renew them as soon as I get back up north. The guy that did my exam for quarter staff was the... Do you, any of you remember the Batman live show that came out? vaguely i remember seeing it on tv like them advertising it yeah um when i went watching it which was the world premiere why they chose manchester to have a world premiere in i've got no idea but um (laughs) the fight director for that was my examiner on my quarter staff as well oh really yeah so i feel like i've got some kind of small legacy to carry on here you know i've got i've had all this caliber of teachers and examiners now it's like i've got to carry this on on some respect Mm -hmm. but the like to do a to choreograph a lightsaber duel is something i would just love to do yeah that's 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 one thing i've avoided with this short film there's no lightsaber on saber action because um i thought fuck it there's gonna be loads of jedis and that's what people. Oh, jet, I was just like, oh my god, that's just going to be an absolute nightmare to choreograph. And yeah, I was just like, well, let's do some Mandalorians because uh, everyone loves a bit of Mandalorian kind of fighting. That's what we did, like a Jedi's first Mandalorians. I thought that's going to be quite a good appeal because I don't think it's been really done too much. You've had like stormtroopers against Mandalorians and other things like that, but not. I think the, I think the closest we've had with it is probably Old Republic. Where it's referenced left, right, and centre, the Mandalorian Wars. Because yeah. obviously you had Darth Revan, who was a general in the Mandalorian Wars, along with um, guy with the mask, Darth Darth Malak. Yeah. Yes, Darth Malak, Malak, who were you know the two leading generals of the Jedi forces who eventually turned and whatnot. You know, in the Mandalorian Wars, and you had Revan as well, who not Revan, sorry, the exile in Old Republic 2, who was, you know, underneath, um, who was one of Revan's students, also in the war, but did a lot as well. You know, you find out more about Malachor 5, you know, the, the, the Mandalorians really got fleshed out so much in that franchise. I don't know what it's like in the MMO, you know, I've not played it, despite really wanting to, but... Nah, I don't need it feels, to. It feels that's where the Mandalorians are getting a lot more emphasis on. I mean, they've popped into the books, you know, all oh, these are Mandalorians, the, the badasses, you know, don't go near them. Whereas in that franchise, they were so, saw so much about them. You know, you got the most information about them in that franchise. Completely yes. lost my train of thought halfway through that. <laughs> but um, yeah, what is it? Um, you know, because obviously with Cursed Edge, Yep. You've done like a mini series. You're gonna bring it out, is it, uh, in the film, as well with the final gunfight you mentioned. What is the layout, the style going to be for um, Battle for Galadran? What type? What type of fighting? Um, what, what type of um, series is it going to be? Is it going to be a one-off shoot? Is it going to be an episode? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be one-off. It'll be a one-off of this one. Um, but yeah, if there's any, if it gets popular and stuff, and people want to see more, then yeah, I'll be open to. Uh, but I know after it's about, I was going to do any other kind of Star Wars. I definitely be like a, a dual type of saber on saber action for sure. Mm-hmm. But at the moment, sticking with the Mandos. So let's uh, circle back to Batman vs Superman because. <laughs> I had a, a little uh, conversation room. with uh, Miles. I think it was on the oh. podcast saying Deadpool is going to be more clit- cri- uh, clit- critically, critically acclaimed, acclaimed. Critically acclaimed. Than, uh, <laughs> than Batman vs. Superman. It looks like the prophecy came true. It's true, yeah. <laughs> I, I will hold my hands up to that. It is appearing that way. You know, Rotten Tomato is... I can't, I'm not going to lie. I can't remember what I said in that episode. You know, but going off now, um, whether my opinion's changed or not, it is looking that way, you know. Um, Deadpool was very much better received. And but the thing is, that it, even, yeah, is, even uh, Deadpool only got, like, three stars in Empire and Batman v Superman got three stars. 
it, it just seems like many people just want things to fail. It's like, and again, I mentioned before it's even come out. I uh, think, I think it's we're just hitting the the the, the dregs of. I can't be bothered yet with uh, comic book movies anymore. We're at that point there is, now. There is a bit of a fatigue now. Yeah, yeah. I think it it's is. Oh, Marvel have such. Marvel or what now? Phase the middle of Phase Three, ending of Phase well, Three st- now. Just about to start Phase yeah. Three. Yeah, with um, Civil War. Yeah. Yes, I can't remember if it was the start or the middle of it. You know, they they're well, you know, they're ahead of it now. You know, X Men started this big boom in it in two thousand. Um, X Men one. You know, that started the big boom. I also kind of want to say Blade might have had a hand in that, but you know that that'd be based on an opinion. DC, yes, have come late to the party now. By saying, you know, we're going to take this a lot more seriously. We want to have a series. We want to match. Um, we want to match Marvel now. It's a bit late. But I get a feeling the hype themselves, they may, like, not so much them. Because I don't think they've hyped it as much as what you expect. We've been like, oh, Batman, yeah. Superman, who's going <laughs> to win? You know, Timeless Tale. It's like, yeah, <laughs> we, we know this is an ongoing debate and this debate's always going to carry on. <laughs> You know, but yeah. the, the hype and the legacy it's had has already killed this film, in in my view. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and also, can yeah. beat Superman. We know Superman can beat Batman. They're each other's strengths and weaknesses. I don't care as long as it's entertaining. I, I don't give a shit if Superman wins it by giving Batman a kick in the nuts. You know, as well, as... I, I know the whole plot, so I'll spoil uh, it. don't you say a thing. I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen, you know. Uh, oh, well, the trailers pretty much yeah. said it all. Oh, yeah. really? Really? Nothing <laughs> even is slightly different from what the trailer... It's just the trailer. I should just watch the trailer. I'm going to save myself yeah, 10 quid. <laughs> yeah. Save myself I, I 10 quid and watch the trailer again. Like, yeah. with, with the Justice League um, film, I, I'm wondering how that's going to work, like when, they're gonna, like when they first work together as a team. Is obviously when Dark Side comes into it. Or is yeah, that, there's, or, or there's or like a shadow him, with that. As long as I uh, call him Dark, Dark Side. Cause it's I, call him Dark Side. I call him Dark Side because that's how it's fucking spelled. Does man not in? Mini ran over. But I'm wondering how, if they're going to have that style of film because obviously we've had, you know, the comics has recently gone over that again. Yeah. You know, we've had the animated film come out now that involves Shazam. Yeah. Um, or Captain Marvel. Um, you know, Shazam. no, it's Captain Marvel. Don't, don't, don't correct me on this one. He will always be Captain Marvel to me, despite you know. I don't care if they want to change the name. Ka- to Cal Denver's, I believe, is Captain Marvel. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> but in DC's Captain Marvel, yeah. <sighs> don't, don't ruin this for me. I hate when things like this happen because it's like, it's Shazam. No, it's Captain Marvel. But I know him as Shazam. Yeah, well, it's Captain Marvel. Things. Well, change. they'll change the name just to make it easier not to get confused with another comic. But it's like, I don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I'm yeah, I wonder if they are they going to rehash that story again in such a short time, or are we going to get something original possibly in the films? <laughs> I'd love to. See, I, no, know, no. Don't no. Be wrong, I no, would love not, to see right. a live action version of of Dark Side's invasion. I'd love. There, to see, there is going to be a hint cool. of that because Batman has a nightmare in it in the in the trailer. You see um, Dark Side yeah, yeah, in the desert when you see Batman. Vision. That's yeah. Doomsday, isn't it? No, 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 no. Dark, no, no, Dark Side uh, has a bit of a uh, appearance in the film. Because there was that giant figure that everyone saw, and it was. No, 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 no. There's a scene. You know, we see Batman in almost like. No, no. Not... I've, I've, I've probably. I can't okay. The desert-looking right, scene. The desert-looking scene. In yeah, the trailer. almost like something out of Dread when he's in the cursed stuff. There's a bit yeah. where Batman's in like a, in a long map kind of thing, and he's got all the cow yeah. and stuff. He's beating the shit out of. Is you see like a dark side symbol in the desert and all like fire rising in pits. And oh, stuff. I can't remember that. Yeah, I said something uh, I really something I really look forward to. I try to avoid trailers as much as I can because I want to go. We all and... watched it together. <laughs> Pretty sure. I probably did, but I blanked it out. Like I said, I like to just watch things. Like we've all seen the main trailer coming on, but I want to go in there fresh face as the you know the young boy who grew up watching Batman and and this and Batman I want and to Robin. Enjoy it. Yeah, Batman and Robin with Alicia Silverstone. Oh no, Go. no! I watched Clueless uh, not too long ago. That was a good movie. Alicia Silverstone was uh, all right in that. She is. But, fine. 
All right, okay, ba Batman v Superman, guys. I'm, I'm, still more, I'm still more excited for Lego Batman more than anything. <laughs> yes. I was like, really? They're going to hash that again? The trailer's been amazing from what, from what I watched this afternoon. I, I'm going to oh. have to watch this. It sounds really good. Oh. Do we need to bring it up now? Or? Nah. It's Not after it's recent too problems. risky at the moment. Oh, okay. For those of you who aren't aware, which I know for a fact, all of you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there is no episode, episode six. From episode six, the Civil War trailer might have got us a little bit of um, controversy. Yeah. Yeah. Funny, like fair, some kind of like I don't know, fair use. You you think fairly something like that? I well, some, I don't know. I've never heard of fairly fair useless. Use thing. You know, no, that's their that's their. Um, you know, community guidelines fail you. Oh, fairly useless. Fairly useless. <laughs> you know, I believe we might have mentioned it before, but you know, so, some little shitty, tiny thing, which got us in trouble for that video. So yeah, for a while we're not gonna use trailers, I don't think, until we sort it out, basically. Yeah. yeah. Bit, so apologies for that in advance. Oh, we're getting into the swing of that every week. We get a trailer. Yeah. Now it's like. Now we don't. Do now we don't. Annoying. Oh well. Fucking YouTube. <laughs> it's only literally for fifty seconds as well. It's not even like the full trailer. It's part of the trailer. It doesn't oh, even no. make any sense that. I don't know. Maybe we should start some kind of I don't know channel where we video ourselves. I don't know, forming some sort of reaction. You know. Yeah. I yeah. Was trying to, I was trying to think of another word for that, but I can't think of one. But yeah, I don't know. Do you reckon we could do that? I don't know. Do those, kind of, do those channels exist? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> we could be the first. We, think we could be the first. <laughs> yeah, we can call them reaction channels. Yeah. <laughs> no we should trade that on YouTube already. That. What? what? There's lots of like reaction stuff on YouTube already. Shit! Damn it! <laughs> we can't be <laughs> first for anything. Damn! Yeah, there's loads. There's like people get like 100,000 views and stuff like that. I like, thought you wanted something. Miles know, has destroyed my this. idea already. It's just, we, we, in the first episode, we had a massive rant about this. Was it the first or third episode? I don't know. It was, it was some episode. It was, I think it was third one of episode. First episodes. We had a massive rant about this and, and reaction channels because. Yeah. Speaking of reaction chat channels, have uh, you guys heard about the leafy H3H3 oh, yeah. controversy? I've been watching. Do you guys know about it? I think it's, I think it's just a me and Max and sort of thing. Probably. You never what? heard of Leafy or H3H3? Nope. I Basically, they're like reaction channels, but they are they pick it's on basically good. just the cringe of the cringe okay. videos. And so Leafy uh, was taking the piss out of some guy, which, too rightly, I think is fine. He didn't actually say anything that bad. The subject of the matter was this guy sees some eggs on this car, it's about to drive off, and he goes, whoa, 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 let me get these eggs to you, and gives it to the woman, and then he starts just taking his camera phone out, and starts saying, I saved these eggs, I do a good deed every day, just like, and the woman's in the car just like, uh, uh I don't know what's happening, it's just like... <laughs> It becomes very uncomfortable because he's making a very big deal. A big deal of about... a very small task which he's performed. Yeah, you, um... It's you should nice do a good task, deed, and just like well, well done. Now, now you just feel feel self promoting of be good like me. You know, look how good I am. Just like no, just do the do the good deed. You don't need to gloat about it. A good yeah. deed spreaded is not a good deed anymore. No, it's just... and it's kind of it's something like you know, as anyone who has my Facebook, you know, I'm try. You know, I try to live my life being as my self-created think, you know, feel good factor of being titanium and whatnot, helping me and whatnot. I try to promote that. But if I start going around saying, I helped this person stay titanium, doing it once, fair enough, you want to promote that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. But if you start going, I did this, I gave this homeless guy a five pound note, you're not promoting self-help there, you're just stroking your own ego. Yeah, basically. And that's what it came off uh, as. And so, basically, it turns out this guy was autistic, and it's just like... I, I was <laughs> like... has been backfired in Leafy's face something yeah. ridiculously hard. 
And then his, uh, H3H3, who is apparently Leafy's friends, just literally backstabbed him and made a video about, you know, about it. It's just like, well, what the hell is this? And is it, there's been a whole YouTube drama, like... If you go on the trading trending stuff, it'll be like the top rated ones. Oh, it's fine. It's fine, it's Russell. You know, at some point, this is going to happen with us. You know, when I get my channel up and started, mm -hmm. I, oh, I'm yeah. going to stab this channel. You know, I'm going to stab this podcast in the back. Something rotten, you know, and then be like, oh, this happened, you know, and then in a couple <laughs> of months, we'll bury the hatchet again and we'll be back to normal. <laughs> Just, you know, like, like nothing a, happened. Like a retcon shitty story. Like. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I don't honestly see why this was a big deal. Apparently, the guy, for some reason, was getting death threats, this this autistic guy. And that's really the big catalyst from it, is he got death threats from Leafy's fans for some reason, because Leafy's fans are a bit overzealous, I think, uh, for everything. They, they take everything to the extreme. They're basically the trolls of the internet, like the new Reddit trolls are... Is what I, my understanding would be. I wouldn't know. I've never been on Reddit. You're missing out. I, I I know that, and I see. You know, I am so behind on so much, but my attention is elsewhere in the land of the interwebs and whatnot. And I see all these things about Reddit, and I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. But then I'm like, yeah, this looks like it could be some form of internet cancer, kind of like Zodiac. <laughs> internet know. cancer, Zodiac. What are you on about? The Zodiac page on Facebook. It's the Yu-Gi-Oh page, um, Zodiac Duelist, and literally on that page, ah, uh, okay, it's nothing. Say, say no but, more. Say no more. Yeah, it's. Uh, well, I want to fill Ollie in for the um, <laughs> the uninitiated. God, Basically, it's you've got internet trolls. Everyone, every, you know, everyone knows about internet trolls. Yeah. And then you've got ridiculous ones zodiac kind of takes it to a whole new level of stupidity and like every other day it's like some ridiculous and often insultive picture of saying discuss <laughs> and it's like <laughs> really how is this and this this page is like i'm just gonna check it now and it's so we have something very similar uh for the pokemon side it's called furbank city and we actually got like a bit of trouble because uh, did you ever hear, hear about the um, the police stopping a was it a nationals or regionals that had to stop that uh, Pokemon stopped, thing? Yeah. No, it was the Boston ones from last year because yeah. um, there was a picture of or some guy posted that he was going to go to the Boston nationals or was it the world? It, I can't it, quite it remember. It was Boston regionals, I think it was. Yeah. No, so. no, it wasn't just the regionals. This was a, this was one of the top events. Maybe nationals then. And he was saying I was going to go. He was going up there with two automatic weapons, and they caught him. Mm. Literally, was it two days or the day before it was going to yeah. happen? Yeah. But yeah, I'll just check now. Zodiac. So that was that was the, this group that he actually put that on. That's how. Well, that's the caliber of like, I'm. We're gonna, sh you know, as a joke. It's like. I'm going to bring these rifles and shoot some yet. scrubs, but uh, apparently... It wasn't a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've just checked now, and Zodiac Stupid. Duelist has 27,104 members, and not all of them, because I know some of them are on that page just for the lols of it, like me, for example. Most of that is just literally cancerous trolls. The bad kind. God, I hate Facebook. Um, so to quickly interject where I've got a break, uh, this, one of the new images for the new Wonder Woman stuff's just come out. This was oh, an yeah, amazing the, segue. Yeah, so <laughs> that with the entertainment picture where they have yeah. end up. So there's the. Okay, let's uh, bring this up. To have a look. I think it looks great. Yeah, I, I think it's a good it. picture. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of Xena. Yeah. Yeah, Xena Warrior Princess. I think, yeah. has, I think it has a bit more of a Vikings vibe to me than Xena. It's supposed to be Greek, right? Uh, yeah. So it's got <laughs> some oh, influence of it. I don't know who any of these characters are. Well, the one you know, got, obviously, you know this person. Is. Yeah, I know that person. I, th I assume the one in the long gown is supposed to be the queen. Probably I vaguely assume that. With everyone else can probably just be interchangeable because I don't think anyone else really matters from the island. <laughs> mm. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm actually looking for, like, out of the new universe. Um, I'm looking forward to what's the name of I keep forgetting his bloody name. 
Who? The name of her handler. What's her name? Steve something, I think it is. Her handler? Yeah, she has like... Captain when, Kirk. When, no, yeah, Captain <laughs> Kirk. I'm looking forward oh, to Chris him. Oh, Chris Pines, man. Uh, yeah, I can't think what his character's called. I always Captain forget. Kirk. <laughs> just, Captain... just call him Captain Kirk. No, because he has a name. He's Captain he's like Kirk. The original love interest of Wonder Woman. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Captain, Captain, Captain Kirk. God. Oh, you two. Wonder Woman. You two are absolute idiots. Why did yeah, I... I? I hate the Wonder Woman Superman pairing because I think it's just so boring. What you mean? How now Lois Lane's r relationship never happened? Yeah, I, it's such I, a boring I... relationship as well. It's like we're both super powered. That means we like each other. Like, but she's great. not a real person, is it? That means you can she's have my play. godly <laughs> dick. <laughs> yeah, you know, without breaking you. I mean, fuck having a personality. We're just both strong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure fan fiction probably appro approached that at some point. Yeah, probably. But I'm just like. Well, never... I'm, I'm excited for DC. I mean, I'm pleased they're not following the Marvel formula, personally. They're not? By having a movie to dedicate a character development and then we can move on and then slowly have that. Oh, oh no, no, I'm bored of that shit. I mean, even Marvel are kind of like, oh, who gives a shit about Ant Man? Come on. Who gives a fuck about. Oh. I mean. Personally, that's really important. What are you talking about? <laughs> I thought the film was crap. I was watching it going, what is this? I didn't... Right, are you guys probably going to be like, what, get this guy off? I didn't like Guardians of the Galaxy. Really? Wow. That one... No, I is just... it just because it's a bit cliche at some points? It just... I, I'm just like, one, I can't stand Chris Pratt. That kind of literally had points deducted for me. We already have uh, Tony Stark having all this sarkiness. I don't want another guy doing all this kind of sarky. Well, like, yeah, it's, uh -huh, it's the, literally the same of cast of the Avengers, yeah. but in space. Literally in space, carbon um, copies at some point. It points. was, I mean, like another cartoony, cardboard cutout villain. Yeah. And then, it's, I mean, Marvel I've got to be honest, like, the, one, one of the, my favourite bits about that was actually Drax. Because um, there's a glass, there's a fucking spider in my glass. Nice. Is, is that relevant to liking Drax? Or is that <laughs> no, I just saw it in the corner of my eye now. Drax is like, like there is a spider that. in my glass. I thought that was a quote from the film. And I, was like, I, was, I, was, yeah. I was like, is this one of these joke metaphors that he does? Like, yeah. I had a but spider no, in my glass. I just saw it. What does that like, mean? That's really gross. But anyway, back to my point. I get sidetracked way too easily. Um, I enjoyed Drax because, um, you know. Whereas he's played by Dave Bautista, you know, who's the wrestler. If you've any, if you've ever watched any of his work on the microphone in wrestling, he's pretty shit. Really? Yes. Like he, he did a promo once about a basketball and it was like, uh, this is definitely awkward to watch. He, he's just terrible. But it was like watching him in Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, you know what, actually, for a guy who can't act, this role is spot on. And I really enjoyed him as it. He wasn't as good in a Bond, granted. But um, he was one of the redeeming factors in Guardians of the Galaxy. Because again, I can see I can see some of all his points in that. But he... Oh, don't get me. I mean, the style of it and stuff was great. And the soundtrack was cool. Um, I mean, the product, the product design was really cool, but I, I didn't. I was, I don't know. It's just again, I think Marvel have overdone it, and again, they've kind of oversaturated the, uh, you know, comic to movie franchise, and and especially with Batman v Superman, they obviously delayed it a year as well to work on it as well, and obviously, I think it's just people are just like, oh, can this just fucking get on with it? And, you know, it's just such a drag. It just seems but, very kind of stuck in the mud, I think. Personally, I'd love a comic book film to actually come up with an original fucking storyline. Yeah. That's not going to happen. What? That's not going to happen. It's I know, not, right? It's, it's, not like, it's not like you're in a fictional world with all these powers and abilities of infinite possibilities. Yeah. But we'll just follow this kind of story uh, because that's what people uh, want. If you have established storylines that you haven't owned and you can market them, You've already got a fan base that knows what those points and story plots are, so they're already interested in seeing that movie. Then you just have the rest of the general public who'll go and see it because it's the next whatever movie. So mm. it's it's easy marketing. I and you don't have to write less of a plot. Well, at, the end of the day, everybody got it. at the end of the day, though, people are going to see a Batman film because it's Batman. 
Yeah, okay, but they'll see it. I'm not saying they'll no. be more yeah. interested if it's a plot they know is big in that universe. But it's like you know, I'm not saying that's just picking someone off the top of my head. Um, Hydra Bob, you know, they they want to put in him in a film. They they're going to use the storyline that he's in because yeah. You can't really make up a, an established. You can't really make up a storyline on Bob because no one really knows who he is. Except for he is in Deadpool. He is in Deadpool, yeah, <laughs> and they got in, they got in trouble for that. Um, you know, depending on who it is, you have that freedom of making a fresher storyline. You know, you make the Justice League. People know who the Justice League are. Batman's, you know, Batman, Superman. You can make an original storyline on them. People will see it because it's the name associated with them. They'll see it purely on that. You know, you've got the diehard fan bases of both sides. I'm saying unless a superhero. Of course, it's never, never going to be original. I mean, no, I think I think bad, everything's going to be ad Superman. adaptations of your good stuff. You got a library, a catalogue of good stuff it's already just, written just, down. You can just take it. Each set of filmmakers, when they reboot itself, it's just their reiteration of the character. You know, and what we all four of us might think, you know, of Superman. Superman is different in each other's heads. You oh, know. Yeah. You, you know, you never in ever head is please. Shit. Well, there we go. In my head, I think Superman. I just think he's probably my favourite superhero. You Under, know, it's underneath just... this, now we're gonna have Civil War written down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the things I would like Batman v Superman. It's a two and a half hour film plus the director's cut's gonna be an eighteen with another half an hour extra new footage. You know, it's yeah, of course it's gonna be predictable, but I'm interested to see what they do with that and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I see it tomorrow, so I can't wait. Yeah, I'm gonna go see it tomorrow after work. Yeah. I mean, That's again, me. a Man of Steel just ticked everything in the box for me. I love Man of Steel. I thought it was great. I mean, the whole bit of the bit I thought just stands out in my mind is the bit when um, he's in the laser of his and he's trying to stand up against the beam. You know, when the terraform is here and he's just like, you know, and you get this like awesome bit of music from Hans Zimmer into Captain Superman just trying to stand up against his beam and it's just so mm -hmm. oh I just it's just to me it's just that moment I'm just like that's a Superman moment right there and it cuts to obviously the girl stuck under the rubble and stuff and they're just thinking they're about to die and Superman's just like Whoa. boom and he flies up and breaks the you know I just say oh fucking love it I can't remember that scene I've seen it I just can't remember it do you think we should uh, watch it for no, our movie no, not right now <laughs> no yeah not right now but our, our movie of the week do you think we should and, actually change it and watch that? Why would you torch me for that? <laughs> and what I like about it, I like that we actually, now because of like CGI and it's getting really good, we can actually see Superman like show his powers properly. Yes. It's not like wired, you know, like lifting an act from the air. It's just, you see like, boom, Superman punches Zod, gets knocked through six skyscrapers, and you're just like, fuck. Some people say, oh, that's overkill. But yeah, if it's two beings fighting each other from another planet, they've, you know, yeah. it's going to be like that. This, mm. and I just, I just, I just think that. I think I thought it was great. Well, yeah, and it's, and then, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it Is it Is Superman? Is Man of Steel perfect? No, of course not. There's some little bits on like, ah, uh, trim the fat kind of thing. But I liked. It. I like the way it's filmed. I like the f kind of flashback sequences. Yeah, I just thought. I just thought and, it was really good. And at the end of the day, we know that if DC fuck up, we already know that they can just send Superman into space, fly him around, and reverse everything. <laughs> that can never happen. Or you can piss everyone and make them forget. <laughs> the thing is though, Marvel don't have a perfect track record. You have to remember Marvel at one point really shit and DC were on top. Yeah, but look at the time it has shifted. <laughs> yeah, it's shifted and in a couple of years' time it's gonna shift back round again. Well, like, well, you know, my opinion is Marvel make better films. But DC make a lot better T V series. Yeah. There is this Sirai. Yeah, we'll go with They make better Sirai. <laughs> Whereas Marvel make better movies. Official series is plural anyway. <laughs> no, it's Sirai, Max. Shut up. Sirai. <laughs> well, I mean, flat all this uh, Marvel MCU, I think, in my opinion, I, I enjoyed it before. I know Marvel was great. Iron Man 2, I, not as bad as the flack it got. I, I didn't really like Iron Man 3 too much. Um, I thought that was a bit low. Thor 1 was good. Thor 2 was complete dog crap. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, they just shoehorned Loki in again when they could have had this really cool villain and they, he just became nothing because they cut all his scenes out and then you had what's it? and then you had uh, yeah I know but and then you had um, what's the name of that fucking cat Denning for his like man, it's Natalie Portman's friend thing man, man, I can't even say his homocrats like yeah, fuck off 
Uh, that that was that's she... because she became famous for um what's it two, two broke girls. girls oh yeah and no, then it's like oh she's got yeah, star power now yeah. put her shoot put her in everything oh, I just wish <laughs> Paul just literally just smashed Melnia into a skull and obliterated <laughs> her and that would have been that would have been fantastic um, did you know that giant spaceship fell on top of her did anyone try to save her I tried my best <laughs> <laughs> I tried my uh... but that woman over there needed my help too and I think I think my the strongest entry for me is. Um, um, Winter, Soldier. Uh, Winter Soldier and uh, probably going to be Civil War because they, I think they, those directors, they think they've got the balance really right because it's, the it's very much like... Are good. Yeah, and I'm so pleased they're tackling uh, Infinity Wars as well because I think they've got to the balance it just right. It's not going to be too much of a clusterfuck. I don't think. So what was your problem with Ant-Man? Because it is very different from all the other... <laughs> it's like... not... I would have been interested if it was Edgar Wright. This is my problem with Marvel. They play it too safe. Yeah, but they like, had the script, and they, the they, they Marvel is too shallowed safe. it out. Yeah, They've I got understand. The formula, what you and they think like we're just gonna be like because we know it makes money, people are gonna love it. It, it. They don't stretch it. I mean, I'm excited to see what Batman v Superman brings. Yeah, of course it's gonna be cliche, regardless or not. But at least you know they're trying to do something which is different. It's darker. It's that you know the reviews say well they we could stick a joke in there every, every now and then. But I'm like no, it's a fuck it. We'll go. I thought that was the joke. <laughs> I just, I just, you know, I, I quite like the more serious, you know, they're trying to apply it to like a real world kind of situation. Yeah, because each world is a different atmosphere, you know, regardless of what world you put Batman in, 90% of it, if Batman's in it, it's going to be serious. Because yeah. that's the atmosphere Batman brings to it. Whereas you put Iron Man in something, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of humour in there because that's his character. But it's got to the point now where Danny Jr. has almost become a parody of himself. It's like you're not watching Times like you're just like, oh, there's Danny Jr. just going off on one, and the director doesn't want to say anything because at the end of the day, he can just go, fuck you guys, if you're not going to do what I'm going to do, I'm out of here. Mm. You know, well, you the thing find is, your place well, Tony Stark. His real life, though, he pretty much was Tony Stark for yeah, that point. Yeah, of course, so... yeah, but I just think, again, it's just plays too much on it, I think, a little bit too much. Yeah, I see where you It was yeah, like but... his. It was, but, yeah, that is true. That, it was his grand revival, basically. The yeah, June, yeah, uh, Robert, Robert Downey Jr. Years. was like not even done anything That's until horrible. Iron Man, yeah. And then it's like suddenly so Iron Man is like now he's worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> like... well, it's like The Rock, you know. The Rock's now one of Hollywood's biggest action stars now. You know, he did. The... <laughs> His first two films came out, you know, Walking Tall and Scorpion King. Those were decent Wait, films. Whoa, 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 whoa. You missed out the movie Returns with his superior CGI scene where you oh, It literally just like a fucking <laughs> penis with pencil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, you, know, <laughs> um, oh. you know, you've got his... Yeah, but it was only... I was like, I'm, I'm not even classing that as one because that was more of a fucking cameo than anything. <laughs> you just got to think the rock's... But you got to look at his age. first two full-length feature films, Walking Tall... And Scorpion King were, were, were good films, you know. Then he kind of went did shit a like the Pacifier, <laughs> exactly. a Tooth Fairy, a Tooth Fairy. Yeah, that's another one. Uh, what else did he do? Journey to the, the Center Rock... of the Earth Two. Oh, the Rock yeah. is not but either way. He's a lovely Those guy. Those classics. He seems oh, right. like a really down to earth guy, and he seems like a guy you get on with and have a great time, kind of thing. But kind of beyond that, he just got a very good agent. But then yeah. you look at what? Then you look at the Fast like and Furious Tatum. films. Ah, uh, God. Oh, my God. I'd rather twist my testicles oh, we have lost all day. Maxon. I've lost Maxon on mine. Oh. <gasps> oh. Hello? Yeah, oh, you can hear you, but I can't see you. That's weird. I don't know what happened there. Uh, we don't need oh. to see you. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> there you go. You're uh, going back. I'm not sure but, what happened uh, there. You know, you look at the Fast and Furious 5, which, you know, he came into. I thought he was amazing in that. You know, as an action star, there is nothing stopping him from being, you know, the next Arnold Schwarzenegger, the next Stallone, you know, of just our generation. You know, he's very, you know, he's intense. He's what we need for this generation of these films. You know, I think he's spot on. And, you know, I Did look forward Did you mention to... Pitch Black was away, or...? That's not The Rock. Oh, that's Van Damme, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's Van, Van, not Van, Van, Van Diesel. Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah, that's Van Damme. <laughs> Van, Van Diesel. If you want to mention Van Damme, we'll, we'll start talking about Street Fighter, you know. No. <laughs> no. Oh. Stop yes, him. yes. Stop him. No, no, we, we, when that's selected, we'll talk about it. Mm. Yes. But, um, you know, and he's now what? He's 
Black Adam as well in the Shazam film. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. You know, I, I'm I'm just kind of worried which Billy Batson they go for. I'm not a fan of New Fifty Two Billy Batson. I'm just, not a massive fan of the New Fifty Two much in general. But that's where they're basing a lot of stuff off of, because it's the new stuff. Yeah, I just can't stand the Court of Owls. Literally, Billy Batson's uh, entire story is. Uh, what is it? Who gives him the powers? Is it? Uh, the, I can't remember the wizard's name. But you know what I mean. He literally goes, ah, oh, I'm trying to find a boy who has all these various moral um, things I want. And the kid goes, you're not going to find anyone like that in this day and age. The guy goes, yeah, okay, sure, I'll just give him to you instead. <laughs> That's literally it. Like, oh, okay, that was decided pretty quickly. Since you're not going to find anyone else with the moral values you're looking for, because if this kid has told you, you'll just give him to the best next thing, which apparently is this kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, with The Rock, I look forward to seeing anything he's in now, because I think he is a good actor now. Like, he's found his... Did you watch San Andreas? No, I've not seen that. Well, yet. maybe we should, <laughs> you should watch that. Is it that bad? Well, I've not seen it. I'm, I'm just assuming it is. Hogan. Again. Hulk Hogan was in a lot of movies. I'm surprised they can even fit the rock in the camera frame. They must shoot fucking across the street <laughs> to get him in the shot. It's just like his fucking bicep is like bigger than the cast next to him. It's like that, oh. tab- that bull tattoo is bigger. Than in that. fact, all the cast is just his muscles. It's just you know, it's just all faces on them. It's just you that's the that? scene. They put everyone on the muscles. <laughs> yeah. the, actual, the actual rubble in San Andreas is just photoshops of his muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Well, have you seen the photos from Baywatch? The shooting of Baywatch now. Oh, no. yes. Like, have you seen? Like, have you seen Zac Efron? He's like henched up huge. He is hench as fuck. Well, he's he's been in what's it called Neighbors or Bad Neighbors or something like that. Oh, he was pretty hench in that. So no, but he is now now even like, hencher. Yeah, but the thing hench, is though, it's yeah. his job to look that way. You know, these yeah. celebrities, you get paid to look. If I got paid that, I'll get my ass to the gym now and yeah. change in the morning. <laughs> You know, you get all your supplements, your food, everything sorted out for you. Yeah, why not? Now you finish work, you come back, and you think, yeah, I'm going to go to the gym, and then you've got to cook fucking meal from scratch. Ah, screw that, I'm getting Domino's. I'm watching the Netflix. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> if it was my job to look that way, then yeah, cool. I get paid to be hench. But Hollywood for you guys. One day we'll get there. One day. One peck at a time. Big one day today. Say that again. Make one day today. <laughs> I'm not going to the gym now. <laughs> that means effort. Even though the 24 hour gym's like just down the road. <laughs> that means walking. And look at this man. Even he's not, he's right not walks in years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even argue that point if I'm Civil honest. <laughs> no, that was one thing like um, watching. Um, the episodes back from Cursed Edge again. I was watching them uh, last night, going through them again. And like, um, I managed to dig up the link for the original shoot that we did. Yeah. Yeah, I've put a lot of weight. <laughs> I'm not even going to deny that. And oh, <laughs> we've, I've lost Maxon again. No, he always looks like that. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. But yeah, it's like, I just, like, my body's changed so much. I really do need to at the gym soon. Well, if you want motivation, do you think we should, like, have... Because I need to, like, get back into the shape a little bit more than what I used to be. So should we, like, have, like, a sort of... Like a, oh. a loose weight to get hench I off, think I've got a loose cable somewhere. <laughs> it's in your head, mate. Street. It's in my head. Ah, uh, burn. <laughs> oh, no, I've been crazy for years. I know that. Well, go on, you were saying, uh, Rusty... So, do you think we should like have like some sort of like bet a wager go on that like we lose a certain amount of weight or Mate, it's for I motivation? Weigh, like, nineteen stone at the moment. I don't look it. I, I what? Weigh myself. I weigh nearly nineteen stone. Let me let me do some calculations oh, wait, quickly. Yeah. It's all muscle, right? There is actually a fair bit of muscle, but I weigh nearly nineteen stone. No. So I got on a weight. I got on the scales the other day, and I was like, "Every pound weighs is, one thousand like, this is pounds." In depressing. What calculations are you doing, Russell? I'm quite. I, scared. I, I'm just double checking that it is sixteen times. It's crossing nineteen, nineteen, 19 stone. Yeah. Nineteen times fourteen, two six six. Yep. Wait, what happened? 
the last like you know this like the last few years have not been uh easy for me you know i had a lot of issues going on i just i just stopped giving a shit i, okay. I you know this is this is the time right now you and me will have some sort of like weight dun, loss dun, off dun, dun. need need a uh montage we need a montage we need a montage <laughs> Do matter. Oh. So first, first to lose twenty pounds. Not money. Twenty pounds oh. Not money. <laughs> hey, I can do that right now. Oh, I lost twenty pounds. <laughs> I need to go to the bank first. <laughs> what did What do you say? We'll, we'll We'll talk about it after we'll, the show. We'll sort this out. And but do you but think I, it should be a I thing? Like something like that. I'm up for something like that. Like every week we do a weigh and stuff, just like. Because at one point, you know, at one point when I came down here, you know, uh, just not around the time I moved down here, I was not far off a six pack, you know, and it was starting to show, I was starting to feel really happy, you know, I was doing a lot of exercise with mm. my course, you know. Now you got that cake. And now it's like... Precious week kicked in. <laughs> oh, God. I never stopped. <laughs> I never started. Like I never, I, I this is one thing I hated about uni. I never went out. I felt so shit. I was like, yeah, I went to uni, and I'm still down here. It's not far up the road, but I'm like, I could go to the like the uh, SU. And I was like, nope, I never went there. What the fuck did I do while I was at university? Now <laughs> your course, course, maybe, maybe you did some <laughs> <laughs> studying. Did a bit of stage combat. I remember that. God, wake up mornings after that was uh, painful. Were man. you joining any SJW rallies? Was that you? <laughs> were you, <laughs> were you one of those I people? I could uh, get something done by then. For the end of June, sorry, when I move out of this current place. We can get something done for then. For then? I'm talking... We start day one today. Right here. Yeah, right here, right, right now. Start now. Oh, okay. And then okay. we see how things are at the end of June. Ah, okay. That's actually a bad idea because my birthday is right at the end of June. Uh, <laughs> no, that's the perfect time to like finish end of a start of summer as well mm -hmm. i like it that's, that's what i want to do it for but yeah beach body that's never going to happen but i can dream <laughs> a man beach can dream. Whale body. pardon you mean that sense <laughs> whale body coming from shimu over here <laughs> shimu you mean shamu <laughs> shamu whatever you whatever you your whale size body's whale. called <laughs> you're calling me a whale you're calling me a whale you just called me a whale <laughs> you called me a whale <laughs> no i didn't you're both whales. Oh, okay. So is there like, what the fuck have I got myself into here? <laughs> this is uh This is a very interesting blue wire. Yeah, it's a lovely blue wire. <laughs> By the way, you know, I'm, I'm gonna ask this before Rusty gets onto this. What's your take on American politics? Yeah. This is funny to see <laughs> this. Because this is because because you know the last few weeks he's done nothing but go on about this. <laughs> American politics well, is amazing to watch. It's it's well, the best. I'd hate to live there, like <laughs> if it would affect well, me, but just, it's fucking close to watch. Not just America. I'm just thinking the whole talking kind of global, all over the world. I reckon in our lifetimes, there's going to be something really catastrophic that's going to happen to the planet. I know it sounds very down and depressing, but it's something that's going to really kind of split the axis of this planet in a big way. And it's it's yeah, something bad is going to happen big time. I reckon. Yeah, Trump's going to become president. And then the judges come. <laughs> there? Well, I mean, you see all these dystopian films and stuff, you know, we're not far away from something like that to happen. Yeah. I don't know. We've, happen. I've, we've still not got floating cars. I'm still waiting for them. Yeah, fuck the yeah. floating cars. We're gonna, it's going to be like Mega City 1, Mega Blocks and overcrowding and, you know, Shit. all this terrorism. We're going to get Schneider this... mode to survive. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, where's the first place to overcrowding? That'd be China, which means we'll get a Chinese Rob Schneider first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Lob Not Schneider. being racist. <laughs> Lob Schneider. <laughs> Wob Schneider. Lob Schneider. I'm totally in trouble for that. <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> but um, I'm trying to think about anything else. Closing. It's up. really funny. There's I saw a picture of um, Donald Trump's face molded into Immortan Joe from Mad Max. <laughs> <Yeah. Harry Rod. laughs> I've not seen this. This sounds awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. It's like, witness me. And it's like him with the, the horse mask. face mask thing with the hair and it. it's just Donald Trump's like kind of portion behind the mask. And it's like, not long now. And it's like, witness me. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, this is something I wanted to ask. Yeah. You know, it's, it's about, what, a couple of weeks old now or whatnot. 
What did you make of the new Game of Thrones trailer? <gasps> I've not seen it. Whoa. Right, okay, is everyone up to speed? Everyone knows what happens at the end of series five, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah, okay, okay. well, spoiler alert, guys, you haven't seen it, but... Yeah, well, obviously, the last thing we saw is the, um... The shank? Yeah, of uh, beloved Jon Snow. Well, do you think he'll be back? Yes. Yes. I think so, too. And I... There's a, there's lots of theories around the whole kind of R plus J equal, you know... Um, it's not like it's, it's R plus L equals J, which is Rhaegar and Lyanna mm -hmm. Stark equals Jon Snow, because there's the whole kind of potential prophecy that... Um, if you remember in series one, what's the name? Robert Baratheon, the big fat king, he, he kept going on about um, Sean Bean's Eddard Stark's sister, Lyanna Stark, that he loved her, not Cersei. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's always that. And, you know, you see, they're actually walking down into the crypts of uh, Winterfell to see the statue of her. And he's just like, oh, why is she here? She was buried in the sun of the hill. You know, so there's, and he always asked, you know, to talk about his sister. And, he, and Sean Bean was like, no, I don't want to talk about it now, another time, another time kind of thing. And the thing is, uh, in series six, you actually see sequences of the Tower of Joy. And there's actually a little silhouette where it is a guy who looks like Eddard Stark, pulls his sword out standing on the cliff side of it. And he's actually, if you freeze him, there's a guy with a dual sword. And he's actually got, um, uh, the emblem of uh, Targaryen uh -huh. on the crest. So I reckon th they'll go in there and they'll see Lyanna Stark bleeding out, holding probably a baby, whatever it is. And I reckon Ed will go, um, Ed will start, goes and picks up the baby and it's Jon yeah. Snow. And he says, Take him, just take him. Well, you know, just, otherwise, well. otherwise, they'll kill him, they'll kill him because they're obviously getting rid of all the Targaryens. But also, another vanish. thing as well, um, just before the Red Wedding, um, in the books, Rob. Um, legalizes Jon Snow into the family, doesn't he? Yeah. He he renounces his bastardized status, and oh, that, we don't see this happen. in the show. Yeah, we don't see this in the show, and I've always wondered why. But I reckon if it was in the show, yeah, I think the, the idea they wanted would to have differentiate. Ruined that at some point. Yeah. At that point, the fan base would have ruined the show with all these. I think they definitely yeah, wanted yeah. to split the um two because obviously with Catelyn Stark always hating me, you know. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I do reckon he'll be back. How I don't know. I reckon. Well, I like well, to say, um, well, it's the fire witch, the Sandra, She's there at Castle Black at the moment. What I think is they will because on the watch they burn, don't they? They burn the bodies because in favour of White Walkers. I reckon they'll go to burn him. He'll rise up from the ashes like oh. Khaleesi did from Series One. Mm -hmm. um, resurrect essentially, essentially is like kind of John Targaryen. Not only that, if he does resurrect, that break because he died. That breaks the open watch, you know, so he's free from it till, you know, till, you know, till death, my watch is over, whatever, something along the lines. So he's free from that. He can go, fuck you guys, I'm going with the Wildlands, I'm going to go reclaim the North, deal with the White Walkers, bye. Fuck you, I'm having the sword, this is a nice sword. Yeah, and also there's been behind the scenes pictures of Kit Harrington wearing Star Stark clothing. Armor. Which is like kind of got the blue and stuff, and people going, boy, it could be flashbacks. But the thing is, Jon Snow never ever wore Stark gear because um, Leon, um, uh, Kathleen Stark made sure that he never had an association or to, and always was reminded from her mm -hmm. that you're not a Stark. And he always so wore black because he wanted to go to the Night's Watch. He's always yeah. wanted that. Yeah, and he always felt out of place. Um, so yeah, so it's very interesting, and I think it would be excellent if it came back. But obviously, uh, you know, we all know Stannis is alive. Oh, fuck Stannis. Fuck you, Wally. Fuck you. No, why Stannis? Stannis. He's, He's a, a fucking pleb. He's <laughs> just Rifle a King. loser. No, he just Melisandre played with his ball. She knew he wasn't Stannis. She knew he had to, you know, she just blew sunshine out of his ass to be like, you are the one true king. No, actually, you need to do this. So You need to fail so I can proceed into the next scheme of things. And actually, Jon Snow needs to die so I can actually use Shireen's, uh, your daughter's, you know, sacrifice so I can actually bring back uh, Jon Snow, who is the rightful king to the fucking throne. It's going to come another. back. He, the rightful king is Stannis Baratheon. Oh, he's fucking dead. He just ate a bit of Brienne's sword at this end of Series 5, so whatever. <laughs> He dead. He dead. You and me are gonna settle this one day. So what, what if he does? What happens if he is alive? Then you're gonna have to eat your own words there. Okay, that'd be interesting. But Brian's not gonna give him a hard time. Nah, I, th I, I, I think he's actually alive. You know as well. Yeah. Well, you never see his head get cut off, so it'd be interesting to yeah. see what happens. And um, he might just kind of give in and just, you know, team up with Jon Snow and that lot. That would be an epic partnership. 
Well, yeah, it's going to have to. I mean, John, the thing is, though, because Game of Thrones is a series that's going to end. It's not going to be one of those fucking lost that goes on for about 20 years. It's one of those shows that's going to definitely end. Well, we're then... actually halfway through Game of Thrones. So we've just had the lowest of the low. The, almost the final nail in the coffin, Jon Snow dying. And now he, him coming back. I reckon it's we've like... got another two or three yeah. seasons after this one. Yeah, because they say it's going to be up to series eight. Well, they've said the season will end before the books, haven't they? Yeah, well, I think... I, the thing is, though, I think George R. R. Martin, he's got it done. I reckon, because it's his thing I think I think finish. the broad strokes have been it's, done. Yeah, it's the thing. It's ago. his thing now to keep people waiting. It's his marketing thing, because you've got to think, if they bring out the series, when the book comes out, people are going to fucking buy the book. You know, even I haven't read the books. I've been started to go and through it, but I mean, I'm just going to go, fuck it, I'm just going to go read the new book, just to find out what the fuck's going on. You know, they're doing it so cleverly. Snape kills Dumbledore. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, they're doing it so cleverly now. Um... And I think, you know, he's going to be like, okay, everyone's like, oh, but the, ser the series have gone over beyond the book. I don't think so. I reckon he says, okay, right, this is where my book starts, and this is where we are at the moment. You can bridge the gaps in between, but don't, you know, this is where the characters are. You can meet at this point as the book starts, because then they'll probably use that book to do series seven. Well, so don't I, as well, I, the, the TV, the, the show has gone away from the books now. The yeah. show's gone in so many different ways. The book didn't go, and so many different things have happened now. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be creativity be... stuff, but I mean, George R. R. Martin has such a big influence. God knows what notes and things he's written and given to the producers and the writers and things. You know, they've, of course, they're going to, you know, it's, but I say Jon Snow's got to come back. I, I, I like to see it, imagine in the final thing, Jon Snow with his army charging into White Walkers. You've got Khaleesi flying in the sky with her dragons. You've got Bran walking his mind into the dragons so they can control them and just burning the White Walkers and everyone's armed with dragon glass. Jon Snow with his blue and sword. Fuck killing everyone. Oh, so we're going to end up with the Avengers of Westeros. Why not? It's going to be the battle for middle love. And I read an interesting... <laughs> um, I read an interesting um, article with George R. R. Martin. He said he wanted the bittersweet ending almost like Lord of the Rings because he was always influenced by Tolkien. And he says, I want a Tolkien ending. Clear as well. Yeah, so I, I think, and the thing is, I know you know everyone says, but George R. R. Martin is not one for happy endings. Yeah, I, yes, but it has to be deserved. We've gone through so much hell and, and pain watching these characters die and been, you know, killed by these tyrants and things like along the way and stuff, and you know, not justice and you know, ah, oh, vengeance and all this kind of stuff. But for it to actually happen, and yes, Jon Snow to come back and you know reclaim the North, and Khaleesi comes across with the Unsullied and the bad, you know, ah. Oh, It'll just make the ending. You think, fuck. Okay, it's a bit cliche, but fuck, it was it deserved. Yeah. I reckon the end is going to be the people clearing up the D and D game. Oh, it what? was all but a dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> the worst ending to end. TV just wakes up <laughs> drunk from Boffin and goes, "Fucking hell, that was a bit of a heavy night." <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that was like from season fine. one, from from when you see yeah. him having some drinks, yeah. Well, uh, I think that can uh, that does about does it for this episode then. On that bombshell. On that bombshell, yeah. Um, once again, I'd like to thank Ollie for being on the show this week. Thank you for having me. I'm always interested to come back. Do you have online. anything to plug? Anything to, what, anything to plug? <laughs> anything else? <laughs> uh, no, that's it. I think we talked about lots. Um, no, I mean, uh, like, you, where where can people reach you if they want to reach you or your you know your YouTube oh, stuff uh, like that? Director Ollie. <laughs> One word, but it's, it's sort of you know it's O L I, sort of like O L L I E and M O Y. It's just Oli. I'm like Oliver, but just take off the B E R. Ollie. Well, I've got I've got the links to all the the, yeah. the channels and the videos. Okay. So, so we'll I'll put them in the description to, as well. I'll pass them on to Russell. We'll put all the links. You know, episode one of um, Cursed Edge. Well, I mean, if you go onto the YouTube, um, all the Cursed Edge is in one massive playlist. So you can yeah. just copy that and just. Oh, you know. I I did watch it. It was a good watch. Yeah. All the episodes and everything will be linked in the episode, description below. Episode one has improved so much. We filmed much more stuff again with Aaron. So episode one looks quite very primitive compared to what we filmed now. Uh, so it's going to be interesting again for you know for rewatching and other people. You know, it's going to look really, it's, going to, it's really up to the episode now. So yeah, it's coming. But yeah, on that bombshell. Thank you for watching, guys. Remember check out our Patreon and our Facebook page in the links below. Obviously. Thank you again to Oliver. Thank you for having me. Russell here, Raptor Slevin, and Maxon underscore Jesus. I've been separated miles. You've been watching three times faster. Have a good night, guys. See you now. Bye. 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 Hi, guys. Um, yeah, little post-party show going on here. 
I kind of forgot something, you know. You forgot the most butt. important part I kind of the podcast. Of got, I got so excited. The media everything. wheel of mystery. And having Ollie on the show that I kind of forgot to like, we forgot to decide what next week's film is. So I'm going to pass over to Russell and his totally not rigged wheel of fate here. And he's going to decide what film it is. Da, 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 da. And it's Take it away, Russell. You have, to, you have to show yourself rolling the wheel and everything. <laughs> it's, it's coming. Oh, 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 really? Oh, 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 baby. It's Batman the movie. Yes! Oh, God. It was yes! so close to Gundam. Yes! It's never gonna happen. No, <laughs> mm, we need to do next week is roll it a few times. I'm sick of getting Max's picks now. <laughs> it's actually becoming a mistake. It's becoming infuriating now. We've had what? I want to tell you how many five, weeks we've been doing. How many weeks have we been doing this now? Like eight, episode, seven. Seven. No, this is episode. Of eight. these episodes, we've had out of the seven episodes, of what? Five of them have been your picks. Yeah. Like seriously. Why don't put Jesus on your show? <laughs> yes. I think it's fitting anyway. Yes. Because I think it's because you Because we are going to all watch. watch you didn't Super want to ba- see it. Batman versus Superman. So I think oh. it's fitting, to be honest. Yeah, it's fitting. You know, but some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. But on that note, um, I hope everyone is safe in regarding to Brussels. Yeah. You know, we hope you and all your loved ones and all your friends over there are safe. Um, apologies if that joke offended you. Not intended, but. Again, from me, Russell, and Max, we hope you are safe. Mm-hmm. I didn't say and that. on this, uh, on that note, uh, we're going to end this here, and we will see you all next week. And have a good evening.